Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Well, 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 Fade to Black, how you doing? Bespoke radio for the masses. Yeah, man, today's Wednesday, July 19th. 199 days into the new year, just 166 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and hither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network. And KGRA The Planet, I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? Beautiful Wednesday night here in Southern California. Tonight, very special first-time guest, Bernhard Gunther, joins the show. Lots to discuss with Bernhard. The inner, outer you. The deep state government control, the matrix, UFOs, interdimension, everything is on the table tonight. Man, who, oh, look at that. Elvis in Hawaii. I think that's Hawaii. Let me look at this again. That could be Vegas. That's a tough one. That could be Vegas. That could be Vegas right there. Might be, that might be Hawaii. I don't remember that costume, though. That's a good one. Follow us on Twitter, at right? Radio. That's what you want to do. You want to check out these gifts that everybody's busting out on Twitter right now? At Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Tonight, Bernhard Gunther is with us. Tomorrow night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by open lines all night long. Call in numbers 323-825-5045 or... 323-275-9695. We'll get to some calls later on. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio, Facebook, YouTube. Everything is fade to black. J Church Radio. The buttons are right there. So click on the buttons on the website. Follow, like, and subscribe. I just mentioned the, the sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. Hashtag F2BQ is fade to black questions. Any questions or comments? During the show, you can hit me up right there. Also, email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Very excited. What what a great week. Now, we're going to be doing this. Uh, we did it all week, all first-time guests. We're going to do it next week, all first-time guests. Uh, this Friday, over on Coast to Coast, my guest will be Barry Littleton on Coast to Coast. First-time guest on Coast. That's how we like to do it. Very excited about tonight's show. Now, got some breaking news. Um, welcome to everybody on the Bunker Cam, by the way, um, and, and all of you new fader knots. Welcome. And if you were with me uh, for, we fire up the Bunker Cam, if you ever want to check that out, five minutes before the show. So I sit down and, and say hello everybody to everybody right before the show. And right before the show tonight, uh, breaking news, Senator John McCain has been diagnosed with primary glioblastoma. It's a very aggressive type of brain cancer. McCain underwent surgery to remove a blood clot this, this past Friday. 
we knew about that news, and and that was at the Mayo Clinic Hospital in Phoenix. Lab results from that surgery confirmed the presence of brain cancer associated with that blood clot. It's a particularly aggressive tumor that forms in the tissue of the brain and spinal cord. Uh, he had complained about double vision. He had also told his doctor that he hasn't been as sharp as he usually is lately. He felt foggy, and uh, and they went in, and, and that's what they found. He's recovering at his Arizona home, and he and his family are considering all of those treatment options that are on the table right now, which will likely include radiation and chemotherapy. Dude is tough. He's an American hero. Um, I've always liked John McCain. I've uh, said that many, many times. Uh, like the dude. I just like him. And uh, so our thoughts are and prayers are with him and his family right now. 80 years old, uh, lived 10 lifetimes already, uh, has been through, actually, you know, if you think about it, he's been through much worse. So uh, he, if anybody is, is going to be a trooper and make it through this, it is uh, Senator John McCain. So there you go. Breaking news right before the show. All right. <clears throat> Something in my throat. But nothing clears the throat like River Moon Coffee. You knew I was going to say that, didn't I? Didn't you? All right. Subscribe to our podcast. We have over 690 archive shows custom apps apple android all platforms just two dollars a month Let's go to jimmychurchradio.com click on the podcast banner or you can become a fade or not just head over to our membership section on the site where you'll get the aforementioned bunker cam commercial free downloadable archives you can go all the way to the game changer you'll get your fade to black gear autographed hat t-shirt you're not going to get the T-shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is a Led Zeppelin T-shirt. Wore this for Bernhard because he's a drummer, so he knows all about John Bonham, right? Well, he's supposed to. We'll find out about that in just a bit. So, yeah, become a member. Help support the show. That's what you do uh, with uh, with our podcast or the membership area. Or you can do both, right? It's just $2 a month. Anyway, check out all of our sponsors Life Change Tea, get the tea.com, River Moon Coffee, New Pharma, and Studio Dome Speaker. Somebody just posted, I saw it earlier today, somebody posted a shot of uh, their new Studio Dome stereo speaker system. Very cool. Thank you for that, Studio Dome Speakers. All of the banners are right there at jimmychurchradio.com. All of the promo codes. Life Change T has their new promo code, which is FADER, F-A-D-E-R. Just use FADER, either online or over the phone when you order, and you'll get yourself free shipping. They have a really cool special this month for the tea. So you get the Super Strength Super Tea, three-month supply. You get a fourth, fourth, their new pomegranate Super Strength Tea. Just, you know what? And that's what we've been drinking uh, for the last two weeks, we've been doing the pomegranate. Everybody here, all friends and family and crew for Fade to Black is on the Life Change Tea program. So help yourself, change your life, help support the show. It's it's a win-win for everybody. Same thing with River Moon Coffee. It's the best coffee in the world. It's the best coffee you can get anywhere on the planet. It's the very best, right? And you help support the show. And you support River Moon Coffee. They are the best. I think, everybody, I think we're going to have River Moon Coffee on the show on Monday. I tried to tried to do it for tonight, but couldn't quite pull that off. But we haven't talked to them in a while. I want to get them on the show, so I think it'll be Monday. All right? Mm. That is some subliminal suggestion. If it doesn't work for you, the subliminal suggestion like that, it works for me. It makes me... <laughs> drink coffee he was shot down bombing north vietnam i know right senator john mccain all right let's get this show cracking uh, happy birthday to the one and only guitar god brian may today is 70 brian bleeping may He's got the tone, the Vox amps, the homemade guitar that he made with his dad in his basement. 
He's got the tone. He can play. He can pose. He can write. He can sell out any soccer stadium on the planet, right? And he's also 70 years old today. Happy birthday, Brian May. Also today, Benedict Cumberbatch today is 41 years old. And, you know, I talk about him a lot. I, I, I think he's a great actor. He really was just awesome when he played Alan Turing in The Imitation Game. It's a great movie. It's a great story. Uh, tragic, you know, what happened to him. But uh, a true genius. And without him, computer systems today quite simply wouldn't be where they are. Alan Turing. But have you guys seen Doctor Strange? Have you guys peeped out Doctor Strange? If you haven't seen Doctor Strange, just go and do it. Go, go, go. Netflix, whatever you got to do. I don't know. Amazon Prime, uh, DirecTV, whatever. I don't know. But you've got to see Doctor Strange. That movie, that movie is everything that we we talk about. It's like fade to black for the screen. And the time travel, time stuff aspect of the movie and how they do that, unbelievable. And uh, the special effects that they do with time travel are overwhelming. Just absolutely incredible. You've got to see Doctor Strange with that. Happy happy birthday, Benedict Cumberbatch. Got, that is primed and ready for part two. And I am so there. All right. OTD on this day in history. It happened. This is one of the biggest days in human history happened on this day in 1799. What happened on this day? During Napoleon's Egyptian campaign, a French soldier discovers a black basalt slab inscribed with ancient writing near the town of Rosetta. That's right. The Rosetta Stone was discovered today. It contained passage, passages written in Greek, and of course, hieroglyphics and and uh, ancient Egyptian uh, Demotic. But the ancient Greek said that the three scripts were all of identical meaning, solving the riddle of hieroglyphics, that written language that had been dead for nearly 2,000 years on this day in 1799. Fader fact. Here's another one. Man, I love dropping the fader facts on you guys. Do you guys go out and gals go out the next day with your fader fact? Do you write it down? Write it on the palm of your hand so, you know, you can just whip it out. You can just whip it out on somebody. Do you? You should. Like this one. Notre Dame, one of Paris's oldest edifices was almost demolished in the 19th century, but was saved by Victor Hugo. <laughs> yeah, man, with his book. Think about that. That's crazy. They were going to plow down Notre Dame for, uh, they, you know, it was a gentrification program in Paris, and they needed, you know, they, you know, they were going to build some condos there in the 19th century. But that's, that's a fader fact. They were going to tear it down. Tonight, very special guest right here, Bernhard Gunther. Tomorrow night is another fader night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by open lines all night long. What a great, what a great fader night we had last week. Back to back to back to back to back phone calls like that with uh, sightings and experiences and, and questions. Nearly, I think, except for maybe one call, all first-time callers last Thursday night. So we'll be doing it again tomorrow night. I love Thursday night and Fader nights here on, on Fade to Black. All right. Well, <clears throat> check this out. <sighs> Nothing celebrates an anniversary like getting people to cough up extraordinary amounts of money. That's That's... <laughs> That's what an anniversary is for, right? Which is why Sotheby's, you know, the auction house, has something special planned for the 48th anniversary of the first moon landing. <clears throat> Not, <clears throat> man, something in my throat. I don't know what that is. It just won't stop. Not the 50th anniversary. 
the 48th anniversary. Nothing <laughs> spells special like the 48th anniversary, right? Is that, that's not quite gold. What is that, gold-plated? So anyway, the moon landing, Apollo 11, which will be on July 20th, tomorrow. The auction, Sotheby's, will be holding a space exploration-themed uh, event with one-of-a-kind items up for sale. The most interesting item in the con collection, well, there's a few, but is a lunar sample return bag. Yeah, complete with lunar dust. It was used by Neil Armstrong to bring back the first moon rocks. Now, Sotheby's says that nearly all of the equipment from the historic mission is housed in the U.S. National Collection at the Smithsonian. This is the only such artifact available for private ownership. It's estimated to sell for between two and four million dollars. Many of these items come from the personal collections of the astronauts themselves, so there are some unexpected items up for grabs, and sure, there are the usual autograph photos and books and stuff like that. But there's also flight plans. There's some charts signed by the astronauts. Pretty cool. A small United States flag flown on Apollo 13. You know, they flew a ton of those little flags up there and were brought back and given away and, and so forth. Lots of those. I think one of them, I saw it on a, oh, what's the name? What's the name of the uh, pawn shop? Pawn Stars. I think I saw one of them on Pawn Stars. Right? And uh, they have a, a space suit thermal cover made for Gus Grissom. There's also hardware for sale. Now, check this out. If you've ever wanted to own the computer processor of a space shuttle orbiter, now is your chance. You can go and get that. Right? Well, two nights ago, Mark D'Antonio was on the show. And we got into the Apollo moon landing hoax. <clears throat> and I remember, now, see, uh, uh, it's tough for me to talk about this. But I said it then, and I'll say it again now. I was a child of the 60s, okay? I was born in 1963. So... By the time I was five, six, seven years old, that's all the country did was watch stuff on the space program. All the launches. Um, it was a great time to be alive. It was a great time to be a kid. It was a great time to be a boy because that's all we dreamed about. Now, Going through uh, the the generations after mine, I mean, if you were born in 1975, you just don't you don't get it. That means you missed out on Skylab. You know, you missed out on everything. You just don't you don't get it. This the shuttle program was nothing like what we went through in the 60s because you had Mercury. You know, single. Single man missions going up in, in orbit. You had Gemini, you know, jumping up to two astronauts, and it was a much bigger rocket. And and then the the whole time that Mercury and Gemini is going on, the the uh, the talk of the Apollo program and getting to the moon and the size of the Saturn V and and you know three astronauts, and it was just oh man, the technology and the talk. You know, you had all of the astronauts. There wasn't a boy. I, maybe there were some girls, but there wasn't a there wasn't a young lad in the United States that could not name every single astronaut in the program. You had your favorite astronaut. That's it was just an incre a, a, amazing time. All the talk of the moon bases and the cartoons and the and the and the TV series and the movies. You know, you had the X fifteen, the X fifteen. And, and and you would just look through the books and the photographs and, and, and the planes and jet engines and space suits. And it was just amazing. Hotels orbiting the Earth. That was the next step. 
This was the talk that was going on every single day here in the United States. Nothing better. Nothing. I remember the first time I had heard about the Apollo hoax. And I laughed. I laughed at it. I just laughed. I read the articles. I looked at the picture evidence. I watched the videos. And all of it was well done. And it was convincing. But that's not what turned me around. When you get propped up on that fence where you um, are seriously considering the greatest achievement in the history of man, right? Going to another planet, man. And landing there, hitting golf balls, right? And you're actually considering that it didn't happen? Wow. So it takes a lot more than, I mean, just to put you on the fence. Because either, either I mean, you are clearly on one side of the fence on that one. You're just not going to go there, right? But it wasn't the videos. And it wasn't the uh the photographs and if the flag was waving in the wind where there's no you know all of that all of that that's not what turned me around no not at all what turned me around was having that thought planted in my head and i just kicked back and just thought about things just thought about where we are today for me it just comes down to technology. And now, when you talk to a different theorist about this, different conspiracy guys out there about this, like Jay Widener, he's one, and and uh, uh, um, Bart Seibrill, another. When you talk to them about this, they, they're going to give you different aspects of it and that, <clears throat> and and why it happened and, and how it happened. But it's the technology. That is the thing that needs to be considered here. We just couldn't have done it. When you go to, if you ever get a chance to go to the Smithsonian and you go there and you take a look at the capsules and you can, you can go right up and you can check out Mercury, Gemini and Apollo. And you look at them, look at them from the outside and you just kind of trip, right? And you're just like, What? And then you look inside, and the only thing, and I don't care what side of the fence you're on, man. I, I don't care, right? You can be the most anti-conspiracy theorist person in the world. You can be the straightest laced out there. But you go, and you look inside that capsule, and I guarantee the only thing that pops in your head is, we went there in this? How is that possible? Well, I guess they did. They did it. But, man, you know, and you're looking around inside, and you trip. There's no technology there. Now, with Mercury, and it's so tiny, too, man, Mercury, you you, you can go up. You can go up to Mercury and pick it up. <laughs> you can go up to Mercury. You can move it. You can pick it up and move it like a chair in your living room. It's tiny, Right. Well, not literally. I mean, uh, save the email. Okay, I can already see that coming now. But it's tiny, and there's nothing in there. A couple of levers, a couple of little meters, nothing in there. So with Mercury, you were just going along for the ride, you know, shooting it in Gemini, shooting you up, going around, separation, going through the atmosphere, parachute deploys, and, and you land. you're not flying anything. Um. You may have some manual things, and there were some little jets that are, you know, pointing something, but but basically it is what it is. And same thing with Gemini. Apollo, a little different, right? You're, you're probably actually flying something. I don't know how. But the technology of that, getting there and back, is where I draw the line. Jay Widener will say, no, we went to the moon, but that was with another, a parallel program that was running. It was a black program running in the background, you know, and, and the, the, the foreground stuff was made up. 
That was all shot. That was Stanley Kubrick. And and again, I buy I buy into that to a point. Then there is this. When Mark D'Antonio came on this show and said that he recreated the moon, he recre- you know, for NASA recreated the moon dust and was able to do this and it was very convincing and yeah, check it out. Thank you for that. Look at that picture. That's Mercury. <laughs> That's the Mercury capsule. Now, look at that. <laughs> Dude. That's oh, that that's just crazy to me. And seriously, you when you stand next to it and you go up to it. Oh, I just I said seriously and Sirius just activated on uh I got to turn that off. Okay. You could move that thing around. It's tiny. It's tiny. It's tiny. So it it comes down to technology. So they're going to have this auction tomorrow at Sotheby's. And it just makes you wonder if any of this stuff actually went to the moon. And you're going to Sotheby's and you're bidding on something like a, a moon rock sample bag. And you're going to spend $2 million on it. And I don't know, man. I just don't know. All right. This is faded by. And that's, I just wanted to give everybody my thoughts on this. I just, I just stop and trip. I'm torn as an American. I'm torn as a child of the sixties that went through all of the amazing events and those, those things one after another and all of these achievements that we, that we did and finally making it to the moon and and just just how proud i felt and and to be in this position now where i'm actually questioning my my own memories and my own childhood and and the apollo program and gemini i i'm tripping on it okay so there you go i was pushed out the fence not because of Jay Widener. I was pushed off the fence way before that not because of Bart Seibel i was pushed off the fence way before that where i just asked myself if it was possible with the technology that we had back then. And that's that's where I'm that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at, folks. Save the email right now. This is Fade to Black. Tonight, Bernhard Gunther is with us. It's gonna be a great conversation. Open ended. We can go anywhere and we will tonight. It's Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA the Planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter. Jump in on the Twitter action right now at J Church Radio. I'll be right back with Bernhard. Stay right there. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black. You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights. Just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hi folks, let's wind the clocks back 60 years. Food was different. Food provided health and nutrition, and using supplements was minimal. 
Unfortunately, now we have chemicals, GMOs, herbicides, and pesticides that can be quite lethal in the name of our food supply and, of course, the ever-loving dollar. Supplementing our diets can be very important to stay healthy. Cleansing from daily intruders to the body might be critical. Live strong and take charge. Log on to GetTheTea.com. Our herbal tea is a great way to cleanse from intruders. Our supplements is a great way to maintain and improve your health. When your health is not up to par, go to GetTheTea.com. No GMOs, no fillers, and organic. And very helpful in keeping you at the top of your game. Life is too short to feel, uh, you know what I mean. Stay in the game, at the top of your game, with GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Again, GetTheTea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA. The planet. Win big with KGRA this summer. Tickets and hotel accommodations to the biggest conferences. Autograph books and DVDs. Chances to win all-inclusive conference cruises. And private dinners with your favorite KGRA hosts. Click the contest tab at KGRARadio.com for your chance to win big this summer. Your contact for the best alternative talk radio on the planet. KGRARadio.com. This is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthews, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Bernhard Gunther is with us. We have a lot to discuss tonight. You can follow us on Twitter at jchurchradio. That's what you want to do. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Hashtag F2BQ is Fade to Black questions. Of course, we have the chat rooms over at Spreaker and KGRA. If 140 characters just isn't your style. Can't get it done. Go to the chat rooms. Bernard Gunther grew up in Munich, Germany, moved to California in 1994 to study drums and percussion at the famous Percussion Institute of Technology here in Los Angeles. It's called PIT. So that means he was one of those one of those guys walking aimlessly up and down Hollywood Boulevard on their way to school every single day. But that exploration into rhythm and music, became a journey of self-discovery and healing, which led him to body work and the healing arts. His blog is Piercing the Veil of Reality. And there it is a collection of essays, films, webinars, and interviews, ranging from spirituality and history to the paranormal and hyperdimensional realities. He also wrote and directed the documentary UFOs, Aliens, and the Question of Contact which you can check out on his website. I have seen it. It is excellent. Today, he lives in Topanga Canyon, California, where he is working on and with individuals, helping them with their path of healing and wellness with integrative body work, holistic coaching, and transformational retreats. His website is veilofreality.com. The links are over at jimmychurchradio.com. And I would like to welcome, to, for the first time, to Fade to Black, Bernhard Gunther. Bernhard Good evening. How are you? Hey, Jimmy. Good evening. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's most excellent, and the honor is all ours. And before we get started, you get the first-time guest disclaimer. So let's get that out of the way, okay. <laughs> which is it's just you and I sitting on my couch talking as friends. Where the conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends. But we're going to end as friends. Are you ready to go? Sounds good. Okay. You know where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with P-I-T. Got to start with P-I-T. Um, you're a musician. Well, it's funny because uh, earlier you said to me, I, I don't play anymore. And that yeah. that was an awesome thing to say. <laughs> so let's, because, because P-I-T, M-I-T, uh, the Musician uh, Institute of Technology here in, in Los Angeles, G-I-T, 
um, is is it, it's famous. It's large, and you go there uh, to first off, you, you you're not a slouch if you go to PIT or MIT. You, you know, you know what I mean. You are you are in pursuit of a music career, and the talent there can be very very extreme. And you see the <laughs> – I used to live right there too, man, McCadden, right? McCadden yeah. and Hollywood Boulevard. I was walking aimlessly on Hollywood Boulevard, yes. yes. <laughs> and you see – you see, you know who's going, you know, to, to MIT, right? Because the drummers will be carrying drumsticks in their hand walking up Hollywood Boulevard. Guitar players got their guitar hung over them and, and – the up and down the street, you know, living there, and it's um, uh, it's a culture. MIT is this crazy, insane culture, practicing twenty four hours a day, right? Going to class, writing, uh, uh, reading music. You were one of those robots, right? Yeah, I mean, it was intense, the program. I literally had to practice at least four to six hours a day just practicing plus schooling. So I was basically just living in my little drum lab. And it's an amazing... And back then, I don't know, they changed it back then. It was just a one-year program in 94, 95 when I went. Right. And, but very intense. Very intense. A lot of talent. Amazing teachers. Amazing players. Very intimidating. I had no other choice but to just play and, and practice for a whole year that was my life yeah and so and and you had to walk around there every guitar player wanted to be Ingve malmstein right <laughs> right you laugh exactly, but yes, yes that's yeah. exactly there what's was going a big hair back then as well <laughs> yes yes big hair hadn't died yet right and uh so did you have a band did, did you play with some guys uh, during the, the program, no, I played just with the, the quote unquote school bands. They're just practicing covers and, and jamming with other guitar players and bassists and that, but no like official band. I did that after I graduated, I played in bands in LA and toured around and all that. Who was your, who was your guy? Now, this is what's really funny to me, uh, with what you are doing today and, you know, being a percussionist and a drummer and going through that program. Did you look up to Neil Peart? I enjoyed Rush, but what I was really into, I was very influenced by back then, like the older Soundgarden, Matt Cameron. Oh, I know Matt really well. Yeah, great drummer. Alice, Alice in Chains, that right. really. Then all the older Metallica and Tool, definitely Danny Carey. Right. Yeah, was, he's an amazing drummer. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, what about Terry Bozio? Terry Bozio as well. And then, ironically, I don't know, do you know Ray Luzier? Oh, I used to work with Ray. Right. He was, we became really good friends. He was teaching at, um, when I was there at PIT in 94, and he was just a few years older than me, but he's a prodigy, so he was already teaching. Right. It's a metal workshop, so I always attended that. Right. all the covers, and he became also my private uh, instructor for a while, and we became friends. We were hanging out together. and I, so Ray and I used out. to work at Guitar Center. Oh, wow. There you go. And he's now, he has a good gig. He's a drummer of corn. <laughs> yeah. I remember he came up to me and he goes, dude, I, I got this gig. I'm out of here, you know. And uh, yeah, Ray, uh, just a, a really, 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 really cool dude. And you would never know by looking at him what a monster of a drummer. Oh, amazing. And so humble. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. humble guy. Very cool dude. Um, so that that experience, especially back then, uh, it was a, it was still pretty magical in L.A. You know, music was very creative and things were going on and and you were right there in the thick of it. The reason yeah. why I bring up Neil, Neil Parrott, is is that's the he was a drummer that r wrote about and writes about all of these crazy subjects that you and I are involved with today, too, as well. And every oh, really? yeah. And every drummer that I have ever known has always been just a little bit trippy. Why is yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know why is that? We're kind of breed on our own, and some some musicians don't consider us musicians. You know, there are all the drummer jokes going around, right. <laughs> as you know. <laughs> 
But may, maybe it's due to the fact that, you know, drumming and, and you know, practicing all this uh, four-limb independence literally rewires your brain. It does. The, right? r- the rhythm, the constant rhythmic of, you know, uh, things that go on, you know, like, like with drum circles and all of the tribal stuff and the things that go on in Africa and around the world of, uh, with different cultures and drumming, uh, you know, think about Jamaica, right? Getting you into that uh, that biorhythmic dream state yeah. takes you to other realities. I've always thought that that was the case. Uh, absolutely. I mean, back then I didn't know, but I was also basically very much into getting into like shamanic drumming, playing myself into a trance. Right. And for me personally, the reason why I pursued drums, you know, I was in, in University of Munich studying business. Because I thought that's what I need to do because, you know, career, sex, money, success and all of that, very conditioned. But I wasn't happy. And then a friend of mine turned me on to drums and I started playing drums very late considering at the age of 19. But the moment I sat down and had those drumsticks in my hands and started playing some rhythms, I felt something I really have never felt before. Like just it puts me in the, in the moment, into the present moment and I can express myself in ways I could never express myself emotionally and just also for processing, just to process a lot of teenage rage, anger, you know, all of that depression. So I was really, I was able to bury myself uh, into rhythms and just playing drums and bands and or by myself. And it became like almost like a quote unquote spiritual practice, right? So I was really using it to 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 process and to express myself creatively in ways I, I couldn't do in any other way. And that was really the start. But when I went to PIT, obviously, you know, there are a lot of amazing talents, amazing drummers who play drums since the age of four. Right. So, but I didn't let this get to me. I just, you know, I just was dedicated six hours a day and, you know, I got fairly well. And then after the program, I um, played at a few bands in LA here and there. And and in 94, that was right around the scene when all this quote unquote new metal started, like Korn were big. Um, Tool. Tool. You know, Tool yeah. as well, and then, um, you know, other bands. So I played in that scene and then eventually formed my own band, Revolve. And that was kind of like a crossover of electronic and progressive heavy music. And we released one album, toured around, did the classic Five Guys in the Van tour up up the West Coast and down to Mexico. And uh, did that for 10 years, and my life was fully dedicated to music and drums. Now, what about uh, before we move on, because there is a, a direct overlap in your life uh, that happens with uh, our community. There's so many musicians in our community that have that did the uh, the evolutionary steps that you went through. But before yeah. we go there, I got to ask you, what about Scorpions? Scorpions. That was my my very first record. My first vinyl record was Scorpions. Which one? um love at first sting oh man it? great album okay L- excellent album yeah and now <laughs> and i got him what about ramstein ramstein that was i like him that was just you know they, they came later right right but uh definitely big fan it's kind of funny for me to hear them because they sing in german <laughs> right they do they sing in, i think they've uh i remember uh, uh the singer said once uh he was asked w- will you ever do a song in english and his answer was like we would sound dumb. Yes, the English true, language yes. is dumb. <laughs> or it, it was, I'm, I'm speaking in metaphor here, but that was like his answer. You know, that would kill our music, you know. Um, and he said that, uh, you know, 99% of our audience doesn't have a clue what we're singing about. Absolutely. They just go off on the on the pronunciation. And, and the energy. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. The energy. But man, what a visually stunning band! And uh, you know, when I found out what a lot of their lyrics were about, I was like, "Oh man, it's this is kind of tough for me to be a fan of." But right. visually stunning uh, and and very artistic, uh, yeah. just just an amazing band. I, I just I just think the world of them, and and I can already hear it now. Churches, I knew it, man. This guy is he, he's part of. Uh, no, I'm not. I just like music. Okay. <laughs> So I <laughs> just like music. So so then you apparently did what a lot of us do. You you made a right hand turn in life. 
do you do you play drums now? Do you have drums at the house? Uh, no, no drum set anymore. That's kind of tough to have. You need my own room, and you know, so all of that. Uh, I play hand drums, percussion here and there. Right, right. So, but I still, I'm, I'm big. And I mean, for me, like the story is, goes like that. I, I played a lot of drums, and you know, and uh, in my early twenties up to I think thirty three, in bands, and this whole process, like I said, it was a deep emotional process. So, it brought up a lot of stuff for me, like layers after layers, exploring through music and rhythm. And then I was just also dealing with depression, you know, like just a lot of stuff came up for me because I moved out of my parents' place from Munich at the age of 22 straight to Hollywood, which is, was quite a culture, cut, a culture shock <laughs> right, right. for me anyway. And then, you know, in school, they don't teach you how to uh, adjust to life, how to deal with your emotions and all of that, right? So I was confronted with all of that. Everything came crushing down. And I was a bit disillusioned with, uh, you know, the dark side of the L.A. music scene, the music business, the whole, uh, you know, everybody wants to be a rock star. It's all about the image and all of that. And, you know, and then we got we got some label interest here and there. I, ironically, we got a label interest, almost a deal with Dr. Dre's uh, label, Aftermath Records. Right. He had an a and I want to show. But, yeah, for me personally, you know, I just brought up a lot. So I started just questioning the world. Like, I needed to... I, dealing with deep depression and suffering, I remember. Yeah, uh, I was waking up one morning just crying, just didn't know what to do with my life, and you know, been you know, a struggling musician. I had a day job, like part time job at an animal hospital, which was great. I enjoy animals, but still, you know, hardly making ends meet. And then I just realized I needed to figure myself out, and you know, went to a bookstore on my first initiation so to speak into more deeper philosophy or life was krishnamurti i don't know if you're familiar with him the philosopher and mm -hmm. his book freedom from the known that really came sort of synchronistically to me and that started me off and to get more into spirituality and uh, more into also psychology i came across carl young's work shadow work Alan Watts back then and all of that and then also through mutual friends i was invited to go to these so-called desert parties we did once a month. And uh, that was my introduction to um, psychedelics. So I was then also experimenting with that, mushrooms and acid and whatnot. And that really opened up a whole new world also musically for me, you know, just all about rhythm and sound. And ironically, then I got totally into electronic music, which I totally hated in Germany. That's why I came to the U.S. Right. Um, but it just opened up a whole, you know, new reality and realize like there's much more to this world and reality when we have been told and taught so and then you know so you know like in in joseph campbell's the hero's journey once you answer the call there are assisting forces and mentors come your come into your life who lead you along and bring you new inside new knowledge and back then one of my roommates was a body worker massage therapist and yoga teacher so i got introduced to that in the late 90s and he taught me some things uh, some moves some modalities uh, so we practice on each other and i found another talent so and then you know i got into yoga and then i started a questioning question more and more and came across certain work back then there was you know youtube or anything so it was more reading books and all of that right and one book that really really triggered me in the positive sense was bringers of the dawn by barbara messiniak um, wow, I'm you took it. you took those are those are those are not baby steps there. I mean, that, yeah, no, no, <laughs> that was just everything happened at once. So right, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. it, unless you had some kind of indoctrination or something previously in your life to introduce you to these these subjects, to go from one world into that world so quickly, I mean. Uh, Joseph Campbell, you, you you were definitely being introduced uh, to to new things very very rapidly. How did you deal with it? Uh, it was tough because a lot of you know it was it was a tough phase. Definitely a lot of depression, suffering, trial and error, learning the hard way. Right. Right. 
and then conflicting with, you know, I thought I was very obsessed with drums and making it as a musician that I even told myself literally when I moved to the U.S., if I haven't made it by the age of 27, I'll kill myself and all of that. Right. I told myself <laughs> like, you know, right, just right. as a young kid. And, um, and I, I actually was dealing with suicidal tendencies. So it was like literally out of the state of suffering that, you know, which I realized that depression and suffering is not what we are being told in our culture that this is a illness or disease or something wrong, but most often a cry of the soul of our true self to come to the front and break through the conditioned personality and all the stuff we've been told and taught in education and the matrix and all of that and culture. And just, you know, you know, the way it all came to me, I see there's always these assisting forces. I know like the right people, the right books, the right information, the right opportunity came along and just was leading me along this path. You know, there's the saying, tell God your plans and he will laugh at you. And that basically what happened. Right. So I was just tumbling down the rabbit hole. And, you know, then I had my new age phase as well, took the new age pill and found out the hard way, hard way as well, that there's a lot of deception and nonsense of false light teachings. Well, it's easy in when you're in Los Angeles and you start to go down these different paths and these warnings and certainly the talk of conspiracy and underworld and, 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 and you're in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a confirmation of everything, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it has everything. It it's has everything, right? Light <laughs> it can be very, very frightening because somebody tells you some crazy concept, right? And then you just walk down the street in LA or meet somebody and it's confirmation of some something that somebody has just told you. And that's yeah. also a very dangerous, when you go down that rabbit hole and you get confirmation of these crazy things, that can maybe even take you down a road you don't want to go down. That's true. You can also easily get lost in the rabbit hole. You that's can right. Drive yourself mad. You know, like if it's 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 a, and then you're also dealing with all kinds of interferences on that path, which I wasn't aware of back then, really, right? And but luckily, like you know, I'm actually glad there was not that much internet and no social media back then because I really had to study and actually read books. And not just articles or watch videos, right? Which and nowadays the attention span seems to decreasing by day. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that that really helped. And you know, back then I was watching VHS videos. Even back then, I got into David Icke, and one of my somebody introduced me to David Icke and had this VHS tape of one of his nine nine hour lectures mm -hmm. based on the biggest secret of you know of the world or whatever is one of his first books was. You know, so that was also. An introduction and um, you know and then but I was always just fast it was just I, I had I feel I had the seed for something else like something was activated like almost like something I brought from you know before I incarnated got something that triggered and activated so to speak like right. I think we all have in different ways like a quote-unquote soul mission profile right so that came up to the front more and more and then you know, around actually at the age of 33, my band broke up and my guitar player, he actually joined Static X. I don't know if you know that. Of band. course, of course. Exactly. Yeah, Koichi Fukuda is an amazing guitar player. Yes, he, he is. Was, yeah, that he yeah, was he, your guitar player? Yeah, he was a guitar player for Revolve. Amazing. Oh, okay. I should send you the link of my band so you can listen to the music. Absolutely. So he, he joined and understand he had a family and kids. So as a he can make a living playing music. But, you know, at this point, I was fed up with the music um, scene in L.A. and didn't want to look for another guitar player by ads. You know, it's it's always a pain in the butt, so to speak. And then I just uh, realized, okay, I have this other talent for body work and healing work. Let's just focus on that and pursue that. So I went to massage school, went through pretty easily. And then I focused on that really intensely, went to different schools, learned under different teachers run different modalities, moved up to Topanga Canyon here and started working as a body worker and living a hermit life for many years. And I got even deeper into these topics. And then I just started writing back, they, back then still on MySpace before there was Facebook. And the reason I started writing really was just because to formulate my own thoughts to kind of like help to clarify all this information I had in my mind and maybe to connect to others, right? And then eventually started a, my own blog veil of reality and just kept writing and writing and then connecting the dots with very, very many different topics and it also kind of mirrors my work 
my own personal process because in many of my writings I include my own personal process, my, the lessons I've learned and all of that, my struggle and my insights and then connect them to bigger topics. And then after a few years, a good friend of mine, Umberto, he suggested to make uh, some f uh, videos out of some of my writings, which was then the result of um, uh, UFOs, Aliens, of, and the Question of Contact, then another more sh a short film, Know Thyself, and another one called Love, Reality, in a Time of Transition. And we did those uh, six years ago in 2011. How did uh, moving to Topanga help you get your feet on the ground? Because... I'm just going to say this for the audience. Topanga here in Southern California could be its own country. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it's all I, to call it artistic is not strong enough. It, it It's its own world, yeah. but you will also, if that's what you want to do, you're able to hang out with like-minded individuals, uh, your neighbors, uh, if the entire community is that way. How did that help you get your feet on the ground? It, for you, it, being in transition, it had to have been just excellent. Absolutely. I mean, definitely Topanga County is not for everyone, right? Because you're kind of is isolated. You know, you have to use your car wherever you want to go unless you go for a hike. But just being isolated, especially being in nature, I needed that uh, solitude, right? Not only for, my, for the research and the other topics I got into, and, but also for my own personal process, my inner process, right? And just be away from everyone and everything and really um, enter this new phase, right? And it happened so naturally, Jimmy. I don't even, like, I played my last show, I remember, at the age of 33, uh, somewhere in downtown with my band Revolve, and haven't touched the drumsticks ever since. And that's uh, 12 years ago. But even after that, I didn't miss playing drums because for me also... I realized looking back, this whole music and drumming was actually a preparation phase to kind of clear myself, to heal myself on many levels. A lot of shadow exploration just with music and, and playing drums, shamanic drumming. Mm -hmm. And it prepared me, you know, not only uh, for the online work I'm doing, but also to become a body worker, right? For me, it is uh, rhythm and music is very much related to giving body work. It's all about rhythm. When I work on somebody and tune, if it's very intuitively and tune into the rhythm of the of the person's body, the rhythm of the breath, the heartbeat, and there's a more subtle rhythm as well of the energy body. And, you know, I, I'm big into, I like dancing, conscious dancing as well, which is still, you know, it's my closest connection to rhythm. Yeah, of course, drum, of course. So to speak, obviously. So it all, you know, there's a saying, you can only connect the dots looking back, right? Sometimes in the moment, things don't make sense. But looking back, I can see this thread going through my life. And there's something else has been also guiding me and pushing me, which is, I feel, not under my conscious awareness. Because I never plan, planned consciously to have what I do now as a quote-unquote career, right? Especially the writing and all of that. And, you know, for me personally, you, you talked about conditioning. Like, once I moved to L.A., you know, and quit uh, University of Munich, I never ever pursued anything just for money, right? So drumming was all about my passion, about my heart. It's like Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. That's right. right. And then That's body right. work is That's also, right. I, love, I love doing it, right? It was not about the money or just writing or the things I do do now on, uh, on my website, the blogs and the films. It's just the passion, like, you know, just driven by something else. And I just follow that. Well, let's then, have, we've got to take a break right here. So let's yeah. do that. Our guest tonight, Bernhard Gunther. And when I come back, I, I, I have to ask the question, which is, you moved to Topanga. Well, if you do that, you're also in danger of never leaving the hill. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about that when we come back. Our guest tonight, Bernhard Gunther. I'm Real Street Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. And KGRA, the planet. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Katie Lee, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. 
Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> 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 We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Ancient Life Oil. Life changing. The real oil. CBD is truly ancient life oil from the source. This oil has no psychoactive effect and is also legal in all 50 states. When you're healthy, you're happy. The truth about this wonderful plant is that it wants to give back to mankind life, longevity, and happiness. Ancient life oil are golden grade, all organic, non GMO, and infused with high quality liquid coconut oil. It's simple. Just go to ancient. AncientLifeOil.com today. That's AncientLifeOil.com. The best, purest, organic, and non-GMO CBD in the world. Go back, Lee Tappy. The statements made regarding these products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple, just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner, go back Lee Tappy. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Bernhard Gunther. Tomorrow night, Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake News Room Live. This portion of the broadcast is brought to you by River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black blend. That's right. Just go over to the banners right now at jimmychurchradio.com for Fade to Black blend. Use the promo code F2B blend when you order, and you'll get 15% off. Do it now. Now, check this out, Bernhard. That drummer right there you're listening to, Chris Frazier. Are you hip to Chris? Right. Yeah. And, yeah, another amazing drummer. Just, yeah. okay, enough drummer talk. So, <laughs> we so, could go on forever. <laughs> yeah, we could. We we really could. Let's talk about Tama Hardware. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. So, yeah, the what what's great about Topanga is it is uh, a new age artistic community into everything, ufology, uh, uh, crystals, all the metaphysical things. It's just a magical place. But you also, and it's confirmation of the matrix right there, man. You go up there, you are disconnected, you're off of the treadmill, you're out of the status quo, you're, you're into your own thing and you're answering your own questions on your journey. It all happens there. But you don't want to be that guy up at the market, you know, you bump into and he says, well, man, I moved here in 1965, man. <laughs> I, I haven't left this street, right? Yeah. And that because you are disconnected from the matrix and it is confirmation of when you are off of the hill and back into the madness, you are definitely connected and controlled. So you've got to balance the two. Do you get out of Topanga? 
I do. I mean, for now, I've been here already now 11 years. Time goes by fast. See, what did I just say? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there are definitely some characters here, but I uh, enjoy it. For me personally, right now it works. I have a nice little house. And for me, the key is just nature. Right. Right. And also, I don't leave the canyon that often uh, because I, I work from home. Mm -hmm. right? I don't have to go to L.A. very often. But lately, over the past few years, because of my work, I've been invited to to events and conferences. So I've been traveling a lot and also I host retreats in Peru twice a year. So it's a good home base to have right now for me. But um, I definitely, I, you know, the way my life has gone, I've learned not to like, to say, learn to say, never say never, right? You never know what happens. It's hard for me even to make long range goals. Again, who knows where I will be, what I will be doing a few years from now. And I just follow that guidance, but I'm, I don't feel I, I used to be very attached to here. I'm like, this is it. But, you know, I feel also more, you know, what's coming up for me to expand a little more and maybe travel more. Or maybe I'll be living somewhere else somewhere. I don't know at some point. When you look around the world uh, today, what is the confirmation to you uh, for being controlled? What do you mean the confirmation for being controlled? The, the world out there, they, they are, you know, the, it, the, they are being controlled. Most of society doesn't even have any clue right. of the manipulation from the man and the machine that is running everything. What is, uh, what is that confirmation for you? Um, well, for me personally, coming from Europe, what I see here in the U.S., Americans tend to live in, a, in an isolated bubble with the education um, program and also the media, which is more like an entertainment show, right? And I've noticed not in Europe, everybody's traveling all the time all over. Most people in here, you know, there's not everyone, but I know a lot of Americans are people who have never left the country, right? And never see for their own eyes what, what's going on in other countries and cultures other than what they get through the news and whatnot. So that obvious, you know, mind control conditioning and you're right, the most people are dreaming to be awake, right? They're in a sleep state and under the illusion of free will. Uh, but most of all, I feel the more you wake up and see the truth and see the matrix and also work on yourself, your inner self, and work through your own conditioning and, and mechanical behaviors, the more you really see it in other people, right? How they act mechanically and conditioned. And uh, you also, what I also realized, you cannot just convince people by information alone. I learned that the hard way, you know, trying to convince people of, of, of certain topics, which just got me into crazy situations. But then the cognitive dissonance kicks in, right? Because they are so chained to um, their own desires, which they have, but they are not even their own desires, because they're conditioned from society, from upbringing, from culture, and all of that, right? So they're pursuing something which is not actually in alignment of who they truly are. And that's, that's how I see, see that conditioning, right? And, and, and very, uh, on the level of consciousness and, and forms of mind control. And it's getting even crazier, you know, now with the rise of technology, transhumanism, uh, EMF, and all of that, all that radiation, chemtrails, and whatnot. And we're just, you know, we're being kept on this lower frequency of survival and material in indulgence and separation. And, uh, you know, we have, our bodies are being kept, you know, being to toxified, so to speak. Uh, so we can't really even access our true self, right? Work through our own things because most people are so plugged in, they are fighting for survival, right? And then they... Um, put themselves into life situations where they then are kind of stuck, right? So the older you get, the harder it is sometimes to break out of it, depending on your life circumstances. For me, personally also, I never had the drive. I never had the desire of like, oh, I want the career, this money, house, wife, kids, and all of that. I never had that. For me, the main thing was what is life about? What is truth? What is, what is this world? Who am I? So I was driven by these questions my whole life. Right. So there but that's, is, I feel it's an individual thing as well. Yeah, it is totally individual because there is nothing wrong. If, if your goal uh, is to have a wonderful family and provide them with, with a nice house and drive them around in a nice car, but 
you have found your bliss in doing that, right? And you are able right. to have the house that you want and, and, and the happiness that is driving you and the family, but you have found your bliss and you found the answers in your own life and you are happy with that. Well, then you found your bliss. You know, there are, I, there are people out there that, that drive a, 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 a 1966 classic V8, you know, car that they spend a lot of time and money on, but they have all the answers to life too as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's you're not, a, right. yeah, yeah no, it's not, it's a good pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can drive around on a Harley if that so drives you and still have your bliss. Yeah, right. I mean, exactly. That's actually, you know, kind of like the cornerstone of my work. It's all about the individual, right? What works for me may not work for another. We that's need to right. respect. We need to respect that, and that's what I do in my private practice, in coaching or processing with people. I help them to tune into their own inner guidance, what is right for them, their own bliss, but also, you know, cutting through the conditioning. And it may be something I cannot relate to, but this is um, his or her soul path. And I totally support that, right? So I have, I have zero judgment around that, you know, what people do with their personal lives. It's just like, this is really the desire you have and the drive if you have coming from your true self, your, your, your soul bliss, so to speak, or is it a conditioned thing you do be, in order to, have, you know, appeal to other status quo, you know, your public image or childhood wounding, you know, parent issues, right? The, a lot of a lot of us have desires from our parents taken on that are not even our own, and so to so to speak, that goes uh, deep into uh, adulthood and all of that. So it's really an individual thing, right? It's there's no this is the way, so to speak. When you first started, re let's go back to Joseph Campbell for a second because yeah. I, he he has a way of uh, causing serious epiphanies in people. Right. That's just uh, and and the whole hero hero's journey. I'm so glad to hear you bring that up. But when you first read Joseph Campbell and you read the word bliss and finding your own bliss, you don't necessarily have a clue what he's talking about at that point. And then you go off and then eventually find your bliss. I'm going to ask you now, have you found yours? Um. Yes, I love what I'm doing, and it always changes. It's hard. I don't want you know that whole bliss thing. It's not a, a definition, right? It's not I love body work like, like this, but I'm more than that. You know, it's this bliss. It's just also this joyful engagement with life. Right. Right. That's really, on a more general sense, what it comes down to. And also, it's important the all these the twelve different steps, or more than that in, in Joseph Campbell's journey of the hero and it's all about answering the call right getting out of the ordinary world and stepping into the adventure but there's also what a lot of people don't know the uh, um, the failure so to speak of refusal of the call if people don't uh, follow that call out of fear out of insecurity or they're uh, you know being judged by others so they don't heed the call so they get stuck and then become very unhappy but if you answer the call, according to Joseph Campbell, you're driven by a question, and that's you embark on the quest. And quest comes from the word question. So something is within you. You step into the unknown, so you don't know really what it is, but you know that's, that uh, leads you to your bliss. You find the treasure, right? When in the mythology on films, the, the hero finds the treasure. That is you know, his own soul essence, his soul mission purpose that he has found, so to speak, right? And then comes but, home. Right. And then he comes back home. Right. And then, you know, uh, you know, bring it back as this embodied uh, human being. And but, you know, this road is not an easy road. Right. There are trials and errors and lessons and and, you know, fighting the dragons in the underworld, which means, you know, coming in terms of your own shadow, your own stuff, which you need to work through. And there's another aspect in the hero's journey. You know, like a lot of Hollywood movies, as you know, are based on that myth, uh, on that story, so to speak. Well, the good ones are. <laughs> right, the good ones, yeah. But when the hero, for example, you know, liberates the princess or finds the woman and they marry and whatnot, it's actually an analogy of not necessarily physically finding your partner, but uh, reuniting the inner, uh, the inner female with the inner male, right, to dive deep into the underworld to liberate the feminine which we all have a male and feminine aspect and this has nothing to do with gender right 
But we in our Western culture, we're driven by this male aspect of consciousness of always analyzing and head centric and making decisions based on the mind. And we're kind of cut off from the feminine, which is rooted in the body, connected to nature, connected to everything. And it sees the wholeness of it all. And it, you know, it relates more this to this intuitive knowing to your gut response, your gut knowledge. And that's how I have made all of my major decisions in my life. It was not a logical decision. It was just this inner drive like this. I need to follow this. I don't logically, it doesn't make sense, but something within me, you know, draws me out and, and answers that call. And that also requires a willingness to step into the unknown, right? And a lot of people don't do this step because of fear or insecurity or like, you know, they want to always be safe and in comfort. But to really find that bless, you need to get out of your comfort zone. That's really what it comes down to. You've got to roll the dice. Yeah. You got to roll the, you will never be happy. You know, you, you, there are more movies probably uh, that aren't, I, I said that wrong. There are more movies about not taking the hero's journey and, and being bummed out, right? The guy that decided not to do that. And that's the warning there. Do you want to be that person? We keep saying guy, but you know, do you want to be that person that is trapped and unhappy just because I was, told once uh, at a very, very young age that you don't want to be the old guy that says, I should, I could have, I should have, and here I am now, and I didn't, and I am not happy, right? You you, you just, you don't want to be that guy. So that, which goes back to uh, my question, when you first started to read Joseph Campbell and that word bliss there and what the hero's journey involved, knowing what you know now and you explained it well, you didn't have a clue back then, did you, as you started the journey and what all of this meant? No, no clue. I was, it just got confirmed later when I got into Joseph Campbell. Like, wow, that's, you know, because it's an archetypal journey. It's an archetype. It's a, it's a collective behavior mechanism, so to speak. We all have imprinted within us, you know, in, 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 in our individual expression. But, you know, like when I uh, quit uh, college or university in Munich and went to L.A. to study drums, I was following my bliss. I was like, it's drumming. It just excites me. I love it. Right. I, that's what I want to do. Right. And what I've also noticed, you know, there's the big hero's journey. It's like a cycle. Right. Which can you know you can relate it to the, to one's life, but there are tiny, more little he- cycles of hero's journey that come like phases, right? Where we go constantly through the cycle, and there's a new call, and there's something else we get into or, or like or enjoy, and <clears throat> ultimately, it's all about soul realization, right? Of really finding our true self, and ultimately, our connection. To the divine. I mean, the end of, of the hero's journey, as, a, as Joseph Campbell writes, is, is really to be in this world, but not of this world, right? He has conquered death, like no fear of death, which gives you the liberation to truly live, right? That's right. And so, and with that, you have all of those little pieces that as you start to get through them, you look back and you start to realize that one, Joseph Campbell was spot on, right? He's absolutely right. And if you do it correctly, you have a series of blisses right in a row and you find yourself absolutely happy. You're not disappointed. You may fail, at certain things, but yeah. it made you happy going through those little pursuits. And in the end, it's a big, long chain that takes you through where you want to go. Exactly. And also even the struggle and the quote unquote bad things happen because I've been through a lot. It has not been easy at all. You know, the suffering and depression and, and you know, and, and failure and mistakes and all of that. But in the end, all these were lessons. And even looking back, initiations that led me to something better, right? So sometimes when something really bad happens to us, relationship breakup, financial hardship, we lose a job in the moment, it sucks, it makes no sense, we curse everyone in the world, we feel shitty about ourselves. But, you know, from this higher perspective, it's almost like spirit is like, okay, we need to let go of this. We have given you many signs and symbolisms, you're not listening, so we need to cut this loose to put you on your path. 
And then if you follow that, if you truly let go of your old self, the rebirth then happens and then you align with your true bliss and you look back and you see all these quote unquote bad things that happened were actually in your favor, so to speak, like a necessary lesson, an initiation to put you on this path, you are destined to be on a soul level to fully align yourself with your bliss. What causes that fear of uh, taking the next step? Is it... Is it your friends? Uh, is it your family? Is there negative aspects around you that you need to let go of, but you're afraid of letting go of friends? Yeah. What, what is it? Is it fear? And what causes that? All the above. I mean, for me, that's also the basics of, of, of matrix programming, right? Because in school, we're being, uh, you know, mostly uh, taught that materialism, having a good career, decide what you want at the age of 18, study and have that job. And the more money you make, the more success you're supposed to have. So there's trap of security, right? Of all of that, not able to bring out. But like you mentioned as well, it can be also other people, right? Friends or family who discourage us because of their own insecurity, right? Right. They discourage us uh, and talk negative to us because if we step out of the herd, so to speak, then they may need to question their own lives and they don't want that, right? They want to keep everybody together. <laughs> Let's keep everybody, you know, not nobody uh, breaks out of the herd, so to speak. And, you know, and then inner um, fears as well, right? There's insecurity, uh, trauma from past, you know, childhood wounding and all of that can all play a role. Absolutely. Right. Even like in my path, when I got deep in this whole alien UFO topic and crazy stuff, I, I lost a lot of friends, a lot of long term friends were making fun of me, thought I was gone crazy. So it was a very lonely road for a while. And I think that's part of it, too. Sometimes it can be a lonely road, especially if you're on the path towards seeking truth and awakening. So you really need to learn to um, be comfortable with yourself, to learn solitude. Right. And but then if you really commit to that, even that's what it what Joseph Campbell said, if you commit to the call 100 percent, you know, then there are assisting forces and it happens in, in beautiful, magical, most often intense or more subtle ways. The right book, the right teaching, like I mentioned before, the right person comes along to help you further. Right. These assisting forces uh, to uh, for you to progress on the path. Right. And within it, there are lessons, definitely. But, you know, for me, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent because so many people have, have like this precious cargo, the, um, uh, you know, that um, <clears throat> treasure, what also the hero is supposed to find within himself. Right. But mostly people are so conditioned, also matrix wise and all of that, that they don't trust that because you need to really develop a trust into life right, uh, to n jump and let the net appear, so to speak. So that's really the major step. When did you, um, I, I went through, uh, and a lot of the audience right now that is listening to this conversation totally gets what we are saying because they have, you know, freed themselves and, 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 and have, you know, worked at trying to get out of those traps. And so they understand that. But there is also a point in your life where you need to stop and recognize where these changes can happen. And you can maybe influence a friend of yours that is also maybe trapped, whatever it is. And for you, what was that aha moment where you step back and said, OK, you know what? The world is not what it seems. What, what was that moment for you? Um, one moment was definitely, like I said before, work, um, my first experience of plant medicines and psychedelics out in the desert, mushrooms have been an ally for me, you right. know, like deep introspection, there's getting more into the non-physical world. And, you know, for me, receiving body work under the influence, realizing that the body is the mind, that all is energy, and also that there's no such thing as death, that I'm actually e eternal, you know, that this body is just my vehicle and you take care of it, but... You know, we are eternal and death is really literally an illusion. So making peace with death has been really my biggest um, <clears throat> threshold, so to speak. That was one. And the other one was definitely, as I shared before, when I, in the late 90s, somebody synchronistically gave me a, the book Bringers of the Dawn. Right. By Barbara Messinek. And I've never had a, read a book that resonated with me so deeply. I mean, it was resonated on a level that it was not like I learned something new, but like I know this already. 
like I've been here before. Like it was like an instruction manual that that was given to me, or I forgot uh, at the moment of incarnation. <laughs> All right, so that really opened it up, and then you know all bets were off, kind of right. And I really let go of everything, you know, childhood conditioning and all of that, and and just pursued that. And you know, for me, I can also get very focused. And you know, when I want to get into something, I just I also just go for it. There's nothing is holding holding me back. Right. Uh, when we come back after this break, which we're going to do here in a couple of minutes, uh, we're going to talk um, uh, UFOs and and your documentary. It, it, you live in Topanga. Lots of strange things go on in Topanga, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of strange things. But there has been a history of UFOs and sightings and contact in Topanga and Topanga Canyon. Yeah. When have you seen anything in Topanga and when did you see the first strange thing in the sky? Some, you know, lights in the sky, some what could be UFO shapes here and there. I mean, there's actually a book written, UFOs over Topanga. I have it here. Yeah. Right. Right. There you go. And there has been a wave of abductions during that phase as well. It was really fascinating to read. Absolutely. And, you know, it's an interesting energy, Topanga, like it's, it's a high energy place, I feel, because the Native Americans used to live here, right? The name Topanga is given by the Native Americans. It means actually a place above. And, you know, if any of these more high energy places, there's both dark and light. There's some sketchy areas here as well, with some, you know, energy. I don't really want to surround myself, but there's also a lot of light here, a lot of potential, right? So it's like everything is kind of here. And... You know, I can bring it uh, for me personally. I feel it can places like that bring up a lot, right? It can bring up the shadow. It can help assist. It can also confuse. I mean, there's you know, there's like we talked about before. There are all kinds of different people living here, right? And it's mostly like artists, musicians, hippies, or whatnot, all across the board. And it's uh, for me just I just really go by the way I feel and can tune into a place energetically, right? If something still feels right for me, I can get grounded. This is the right place for me, right? I feel if I, something changes, I'm being drawn somewhere else or I feel energetically this doesn't work for me anymore, I will move on. That's basically how it has been my whole life. Let's, uh, let's take our break right here. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk UFOs. We'll... Uh, Bernhard's documentary, which is UFOs, Aliens, and the Question of Contact, can be seen over at his website. I highly recommend it. I have seen it. I watched it years ago. It's a great documentary. More with Bernhard right after this short break. Stay with us. Here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio.com. <laughs> Hello, Fader Knots. This is Jimmy Church, and I'm introducing New Pharma, a company whose products are based on science. Human function based on the endocannabinoid system, or ECS. New Pharma firmly believes in this science, and their research indicates that support of the ECS provides the beneficial effects for a healthy lifestyle. New Pharma's science includes relief capsules for pain relief, sleep capsules, which are natural support for occasional sleeplessness. Foundation is support for your ECS and fit capsules support your active lifestyle. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B for a 33% discount on all of their products or visit newpharma.com for all of the knowledge on the science. That's GNUPharma.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you worry a lot? If you're forgetful, nervous, moody, or overwhelmed, chances are you're not protecting yourself from the ravaging effects of stress and anxiety. 
No matter the cause, ongoing stress and elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol can rob your memory, your health, your quality of life, and your future. Now you can combat the effects of stress and anxiety while improving your memory and recall at the same time with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. Studies show that the ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce cortisol by as much as 30% in as little as one to two weeks and increase your ability to recall facts, names, and numbers in four to 12 weeks. Calm and Clever was created by scientist Kurt Hendricks, a principal investigator in two NIH-funded studies on Alzheimer's disease. Try Calm and Clever for two months. You'll feel the difference. Call 1-800-758-8746 or go to calmandclever.com. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. And fortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back to Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Bernhard Gunther. Check out our sponsor. This portion of the broadcast is brought to you by Life Change Tea. Go to the banners right now at jimmychurchradio.com. Forgettheteacom Just mention Fader, F-A-D-E-R, either online or over the phone, and you're going to get yourself free shipping. Now, Bernhard, what got you into ufology and and the making of that documentary? Well, I mean, all, already as a little child, I was always looking up in the sky <laughs> by myself in the fields in Germany and just feeling just alone. I was a loner, even high school, you know, even was bullied and all of that, always an outsider. So I always was just spending time a lot of by myself. I always felt there must be something else, something out there. There's more to life, right? Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, it wasn't really thinking about aliens specifically but there's there must be something else there's something hidden here and then and over the course of my life and moving to LA and the process I went through and tumbling down the rabbit hole I came across um, UFO research right early on there was like late 90s early 2000 and um, came uh, across you know also the one of these these books the the matrix trilogy not the the film but Val Valerin, the books, I don't know if you heard of them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That was a big wake-up call for me. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of information, and that really kick-started me. And um, I did my research, and I got then early 2000 also into Stephen Greer on the Disclosure Project um, and all of that and the whole Disclosure Movement. But something fell off about all of that. I wasn't just satisfied, especially like – he kept denying the whole alien abduction scenario. So I went deeper, did more research, and then came across uh, Carla Turner's work, which is, uh, she's an amazing lady, and she died in the mid-90s. And she has been abductee, and she wrote three books based on her experiences and the people she has worked with. So that was another eye-opener. And um, we actually, with my band, we had a UFO sighting. Oh, really? What happened? <laughs> yes. 
we had our we're in Venice. We had we're living with my band. We had the rehearsal room in the garage, and we take a break from jamming, standing outside. And it was, it was daylight, and the singer of my band, he looks he, up in the sky and is staring, and you know, and he's like, "Look at this! What what is that?" And we all look up, and there's this silver object, like just hovering, this you know, straight above us, very high but very clear, and it's just sitting there, right? And it's sitting there for 10 minutes or so. Then it moves slowly to the left, a bit to the right. And it was just there. And it was the most uh, awkward thing I've, I've ever experienced, right? I, I, what, what, did, what, what did it look like? It was just like, like a, almost like a, <clears throat> you mean like the classic UFO shape, right? In a sense. Um, but it seemed to be morphing. Right, it seemed to be like quasi physical, like popping in and out, like something it was there, then it was not there, and then all of a sudden, you know, it was gone out of no- nowhere. So, but we were literally staring at this thing for at least 10 15 minutes, right? Right, and uh, and had another UFO sighting when I was camping out at Big Bear, and um, another magical a, place, yeah, beautiful place, yeah, yeah, yeah out in the mountains and there was definitely more like a red uh quote-unquote spacecraft that just zapped over my head as i was meditating and um so all these little things but i was just really just fascinated i wanted just to know more about it and um you know was drawing from different research and i got a bit into channel material as well which you obviously need to be careful with right and and cross-reference and then you know what when richard dolan came into the scene of his first book your voice in the national security state i loved that book right? Right, it was right. for me the first time really like, like nuts and bolts evidence that we are there's something out there and uh, the truth is being withheld from us that the governments are lying to us and all of that and how deep it actually goes right that the official government actually has no clue about it right it's all about uh, compartmentalization and deep black uh, projects and and all of that and privatization and the breakaway civilization which richard talks about as well right so back then i was actually also so curious so i went to a few ufo conferences here and there and uh, it was very interesting it was also like crazy in a sense because this ufo field as you know it's like a big swamp it's so much information right and you really have to weed through it. What is the truth? What are lies? There's a lot of disinformation as well. Obviously, we're dealing with counterintelligence, right? Purposely putting in disinformation to put the seeker on the false track and all of that. Every day. Yeah. So, so I started and I wrote this. Um, somebody like uh, actually um, this guy. Uh, what's his name? Um, Daniel Pinchback. I don't know if you know him. Um, he's like big Burning Man. A crowd back then and he had a website uh, reality sandwich and i connected with him and he liked my work so he wanted me to write an article about ufos and, and aliens for his was online magazine so i wrote it which was the first draft for ufos aliens and the question of contact but he rejected it because it was so negative and why i believe in this abduction phenomenon all of this and you know but it just showed me that he hasn't done his research for me it's not about be negative about it, but making the darkness conscious to bring awareness to this topic. So that, you know, let so I published that article myself. And then my friend, as I said, uh, suggested, let's make a documentary out of it. And that was in 2011. And uh, we featured Richard Dolan, which whom I've talked to many times also in private and at conferences and whatnot, and Carla Turner and other researchers, David Jacob and whatnot. And really also tying it more into the ancient uh, quote unquote you of all phenomena, right? That this is a phenomena that has been going on for thousands and thousands of years, but always appeared in different shapes and forms and was inter interpreted in the zeitgeist of, of that culture, so to speak, right? And what I realized uh, that this you of all phenomena is not necessarily what we believe this Star Trek uh, nuts and bolts scenario with physical space shifts coming or physical aliens coming from another planet. Right. But it's more of power physical hyperdimensional uh, phenomenon where these uh, spacecrafts or entities exist in a non-physical realm and can pop in and out of reality. And also this abduction phenomena is not necessarily that people are 
their physical bodies are taken, but you know, there's a soul extraction and all of that and putting back into the body, hence the missing time and all of that. And, and Carla Turner goes deeper into it. So that blew everything open and I realized that, you know, earth or humanity, the, the, the underlying control mechanism is the hyperdimensional matrix and all the physical matrix we see through institutions, governments, military, police and whatnot, it's just a uh, symptom or a manifestation of um, that hyperdimensional matrix that works through people, right, and, and affects us in different ways and has also installed religions and certain corrupted spiritual beliefs and all of that. And going even further back and realizing that we have also been genetically um, manipulated by sure. these beings and sure. partly even created and all of of that so it just blew everything open right like really down to the question where do we come from who am i really right and that's that's where you tap into when uh truth is stranger than of uh, fiction right so to speak when i feel like you know this this sounds like a sci-fi movie but there's there's truth to it i cannot deny it or ignore it and what's very interesting when we did the documentary it took us about three months because we didn't know anything about editing so it was just a trial and error process and my friend was back then living out of his van. He parked his van here in Topanga and basically living with me. And when we started doing this documentary, all this high strangeness started to happen, like weird interferences. And we were admittedly very naive back then. We didn't actually know what we was getting into. We were just like, we need to get this information out. Nobody talks about this. Let's do a film about it. Right. Right. And um, a lot of the things, while I felt there's truth to it, I also you know, was fascinated intellectually, but I haven't, like, I don't feel I've been abducted. I don't know, like, had these experiences I've read about, right? But doing this uh, making of the film, I was still working, you know, was working, obviously, as a body worker. And I had some clients coming to me. And as I do with every client, I check in with them, where they're at, what's going on in their lives, any dreams. And a couple of clients, especially, particularly this one, shared a dream. And she basically shared a classic alien abduction, Right that she saw this UFO or that this, this little uh, creature, she described the gray alien appeared on her bed. The next thing she knows, um, she's up in her bed and see this, sees this UFO leaving. Well, this is basically based on missing time that it has abduction happened in between. But she didn't know at all that what I was getting into. It's not like I was telling my body work clients that I do, I'm doing in a UFO uh, documentary and all of that. Right. Right. So I got these... Uh, People came to me, and it was interesting. So I was working with her, and then so a, a week later, and then she shared more. She said more memories came up, and then I carefully introduced to her, like into this abduction phenomenon and 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 the research, and then she had more memories about her parents and her grandmother had similar experiences. And as you know, abductions tend to run in family. There's some genetic component to it, right? So she was became more aware of it. Right. And um, then I saw in another session, she had another experience. This entity appeared to her and told her that she has been reprogrammed. Wow. Right. And she didn't know what that meant. And I was like, OK, that is interesting. And I just, you know, my body work and my energy work helped her just to get grounded just to for basic health reasons and just, you know, help her. But I wasn't, you know, I just started in, into this research. So I wasn't in any uh, position to. Um, you know, give her deeper guidance about how to fight off the abductions and whatnot. But it's interesting, that was the last time I saw her and heard from her, actually, right? Of all, you know, she wanted to come for more sessions and whatnot. But now looking back, when she said that she has been reprogrammed, that maybe whatever forces were becoming aware that I was getting a bit too deeper into it and they didn't want to... You know, have her yeah. appear in your documentary, <laughs> or something. Like that. Yeah, or let her like, right, you know, you know, right. get made her more aware that she may find a way to kind of like stop, uh, stop all these abductions and whatnot. Right, right. right. And my friend, he had really intense dreams, and he had, and one day he woke up upside down in his bed with marks on his, but all over his body and all of that. So it was just a weird, very weird time. And interesting, when we released a documentary, which really went viral, and one of the researchers contacted me, like, this is very, you know, giving, giving us kudos for the documentary. And then she also said, but, you know, you created some attention there. Now, you know, you got to be very careful 
you know, get how ready. You present yep. that. Yep. yep. Right. Yep. And back then I said we were naive, like, yeah, whatever, it's out there, people need to know about it. We need to wake people up. <laughs> but then I saw how, how I got interfered with, right? Not only publicly attacks and all of that, but weird hyperdimensional interferences, dreams. And then also relation, my relationships changed. And what I then experienced, what I realized in the aftermath was a few uh, of so-called alien love bite relationships. Dark side of Cupid, which Eve Lorgan, uh, maybe, as you know, uh, writes about and talk, talks about, right? And that was a very intense uh, phase in my life. A lot of paranormal activity going on in my house and all of that. And um, it nearly took me out, actually. Like, I had suicidal thoughts and was just really, like, down. And, and, and again, um, uh, very, very, very confused, right? So, it, but again, it forced me to look deeper into it, and especially this hyperdimensional phenomenon, the matrix, how these entities, these hyperdimensional beings work through us and target us through our own minds or work through other people trying to get to us. That's right. Right. Well, let me, and, let me, yeah. uh, I want to, I want to stay on this. Yeah. Uh, let's go back. You mentioned, you know, nuts and bolts, uh, you know, many times. Part of our society was uh, getting through the UFO phenomenon because back in the 40s and 50s, uh, and, and going into the 60s, we didn't understand space. We didn't quite have a grip on physics yet or the speed of light or quantum mechanics. We didn't have we didn't have any clue. We assumed they were flying in a spaceship from somewhere to get here. And we were trying to figure that out. Today, we now understand so much about science and now the possibilities of different things, not only the interdimensional play on things, but the speed of light, wormholes, folding of space. It, 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 there's there's tr a tremendous amount of information now that help us answer those questions and take away from the original UFO uh, hypothesis. And right. now you putting this documentary together on the new side of the fence you know, you're modern, you're from now, and you're discovering this now. It does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? You know, no, it does. You know, it's very interesting because back, you know, we made this documentary in 2011, and before that, I've written about it and talked about it. And back then, hardly anybody was interested. I mean, there's the UFO community, and that's, you know, like fringe crowd that was always into it, so to speak. But the wider audience, you know, I was ridiculed, laughed at, attacked and whatnot. But I would have noticed, especially of the last years, more and more people are uh, becoming aware of it and taking it serious, right? And I see this also with regards to my work, how the, you know, the messages I get and, and, and how it's becoming more popular, this topic, especially the hyperdimensional aspect. Right, that there is something to it, and how people experience this in their own lives. So there's definitely a more—I uh, don't want to say mass awareness, but definitely a bigger awareness uh, than in the past about all of that. Now, when uh, define hyperdimensional, hyperdimensional basically meaning non-physical. You know that there's these entities; they exist outside our five sensory perception in another you know, dimension or density, like where they exist out of uh, the con constructs of space and time, right? It's very hard for our rational mind to understand because we only can think in linear ways, right? So this non-physical phenomena and these entities can move back and forward in time and, you know, for them space is not not an issue as, as for us. So it's, it's really just non-physical and that we cannot perceive it as long as we stuck in ego consciousness and and the and the five senses. Well, and and the ability for something that is out of frequency to yeah. get into our frequency for a split second or for a few minutes and then go back to the other frequency and they're coming in and out of what we perceive as reality. Exactly. That's why you see a lot of UFO sightings. People see UFOs and then boom, it's gone. It's not that it flew away very fast. It just, you know, is still there, but just shifted the frequency or dimension or whatnot, right? Well, it makes you wonder, as you sit with me right now, right, and and we're doing this show, 
that what is actually hanging out with you right now, <laughs> right now, right yeah, now, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right now, standing next to you, it could be somebody with his arms crossed going, yeah, pretty much. That's how, but, but <laughs> you don't see them. I mean, that's, I can tell you some crazy things. Have you ever heard of DMT, dimethyltryptamine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, so, yeah, well, you live in Topanga, so. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, you know, I had my face, and I tend to be an explorer, so I'm like, I've explored it a lot and worked with a lot, and, you know, that's, I've in, definitely encountered some entities and beings and worlds right here, you know, just by taking a hit, right? And I also introduced friends to it and whatnot, Uh back then and remember this one friend of a friend she she took a hit of dmt and she's never done it before i wasn't even didn't know who she is she didn't she didn't know anything about my work so she was a bit distressed during this whole experience but it's very safe like nothing happens physically but she was distressed right so you could see her eyes were wide open she was seeing something we weren't seeing she was somewhere else right so finally she came back and what she reported what she said right away, she found herself in her own words on a spaceship. And she all saw all these alien entities and they were looking at her all very surprised to see her there. And what this one entity said to her was, oops, kind of like making fun of her. Like now you uh, discovered the big secret. Right. You're, uh, you're not in control of yourself. You're an experiment. That's How, the message she received. Now, now, now uh, well, we're going to stay right on this DMT subject, man. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> So what is interesting now, had she ever before, DMT or not, uh, been exposed to a parallel world or dimension or that idea? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Just wow. a very regular girl. Not not Ooh. familiar with any of the research. Just, you know, not right. at all. Like, so no. she, okay, okay. So now back to her. Yeah. Wait, uh, so 10 minutes later, right, she's back. Right, yeah. she and and she has been exposed now to another dimension, another reality, exactly. and in this yeah. case, it was on board a, a craft. A craft, yeah. How did she describe it to you? And that's a game changer, right there. That 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 is a life changing <laughs> moment. Do you still speak to her today? No, I mean, she. Uh, I've seen her like. It was the experience, and and uh, I've seen her a few years again uh, later. You know, she was a bodywork client, became a bodywork client, and but she never interestingly mentioned the experience again. She was just back in her life, so to speak, and never really got deep into these topics at all. Right, right. After that experience, for me personally, that was the moment it hit me. I got literally goosebumps and shiver. And I realized, okay, this is real shit. I got to watch out what I'm doing here, <laughs> introducing people to DNT and all this kind of stuff. I got to check myself. Right, this is insane. And the reason why I, it hit me so hard because the phrase she mentioned, the message she got from these entities, stating um, you're not in control of yourself, you're an experiment, is the exact line of something I just read before from a channel material of of woman who, who channels, uh, you know, higher density beings. Of you know, she asked them what is the big secret, you know, in this channel experiment, and the, the, uh, these beings answer. The consortium, right, is um, basically the states that you're an experiment and you're not in control of yourself. So it was just such a confirmation from this girl, a woman who has no clue, no, couldn't have made that up at all. Doesn't even know what I was into. It. What was uh, uh, what were the so, beings? Did she describe those? Uh, this be she was just like you know describing them. Just as as she literally says spacecraft, like definitely like she 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 mentioned spacecraft and then just called them alien entities, right? I don't remember. I don't think she even described them um, exactly how they looked. Like I was just so like in shock myself after she said that phrase and like oh my god, and I externally consider it right at the moment i she was not in the place for me to unload all this information what she has tapped into. <laughs> Wow, how right. incredible, how incredible. Um, with um, with DMT, do you think that it is confirmation of not only another dimension, but something that science should look into for, uh, you know, quantum theory or non-locality and, and the possibility of these theories being confirmed? 
Uh, you know, absolutely. I mean, there's a book actually, quasi science, scientific approach uh, uh, in the early 2001, I think it was written uh, by uh, Dr. Rick Strassman called DMT the Spirit Molecule. That's right. And it's a very interesting book because he got actually funding uh, to to do like legal research, and he did it even more uh, more clinical, like in a clinical setting, and injected you know, volunteers with DMT, which is even more intense, right, the dosage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, lot of people came back um, describing these alien spacecraft uh, experiences, but also abduction experiences that they found themselves on, ex you know, on the table being examined by entities, some of them having had intercourse with reptilian beings and all of that. And he describes all that, right, just from a very scientific, objective perspective. And for me personally, I mean, I've worked, you know, with, with psychedelics and DMT a lot back in the days, and especially with DMT when I used to do it and enter what, you know, Terence McKenna also calls the DMT room, it's definitely another reality with an intelligence on its own, and there are entities that are not projections of my mind, you know, which is usually the argument of a lot of people that these are just hallucinations, the mind makes this up, and it's not real. But anybody who has really worked and gone deep with it knows that, you know, you sense there's another intelligence. This is me and there's this other, right? Something otherness. And they're all shape-shifting too, right? I had experiences on DMT with reptilian beings that shape-shift like mechanical elves, so to speak, right. <laughs> into other shape and forms. And a lot of them are are just benign. Like a lot of these entities were just curious, like, hey, how are you? What are you doing? I had this little reptilian entity sitting on my chest looking at me just curiously and then going off. All these weird things happened. You know, for me personally, I never had a distressing, fearful experience on that ever. I always felt comfortable. Interestingly, on that note, whenever I entered the DMT space and I was in there, it felt so familiar, right? Like more familiar than this physical existence. Like something I've been there before, or maybe I came from, I don't know, right? But you really experience yourself beyond this physical body, your, 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 your energy essence, so to speak. And when you come back after 10, 15 minutes, you feel the restriction of this three density physical meat back, like boom, I'm back. Right. And you see, realize, oh my God, there's so much more out there and it's all right here. <laughs> well, and what's interesting, we got to take a break right here, but what's interesting for me, you know, LSD and mushrooms and the, the classic acid trips, those are different for everybody, right? Absolutely. And, uh, those Absolutely. are different. DMT and ayahuasca, those experiences uh, and documented are nearly the same for everybody. They're going to the same place. And and it is a physical thing. It is another world as opposed to, you know, an LSD or, or mushroom trip. These are two different uh, things, and I don't think that they should be confused as being the same thing. No, I agree. I mean, for me, I, I enjoyed mushrooms as well. I've I've really, ex you know, there were experiments I've done very influenced by Terence McKenna back then, like eating seven, eight grams on my own and locking myself into a dark room and let's see what happens. Right, right. Right, and I've also experienced oh. all kinds of entities and beings, but with mushrooms, it's like, it's very physically bodily, so it's like, it's not as clear as something with DMT, right? So it's definitely a different, different experience. And I never really got into acid or lsd because it was just too much of a head trip in my head well you know? plus and plus it's, it's a and uh, we're gonna yeah we're gonna take a break right here uh, uh we're gonna reset your uh, phone connection too as well it's breaking up a little bit so we'll do that now but but lsd you don't even know what chemist is making that <laughs> that's another consideration this is a uh, fade to black fascinating conversation our guest tonight bernhard gunther we'll be right back This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. 
Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com slash radio, or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on the smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you or a loved one suffer migraine headaches? Listen to what scientist Kurt Hendricks has to say. 35 million people in the United States suffer with debilitating migraines. If you or a loved one are one of them, you need to know about Mig Relief. Hi, I'm Kurt Hendricks, the scientist that formulated and patented the MyGrelief migraine formula. MyGrelief is a non-prescription dietary supplement recommended by neurologists, pharmacists, and pediatricians to address nutritional deficiencies in both adults and children over two with migraines. Try MyGrelief for three months and see the powerful difference it can make in your life or get your money back, no questions asked. Go to MIG911.com or call 800-MIG-7354. You can change your life today. So if you suffer from migraines, don't wait. Call 800-MIG-7354. That's 800-MIG-7354. Or visit MIG911.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back. Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Bernhard Gunther. Now, his exploration into rhythm and music became a journey of self-discovery and healing, which led him to body work in the healing arts. He made the documentary UFOs, Aliens, and the Question of Contact. High strangeness always enters one's life when you go down this path. And you were warned about this, Bernhard. That's what's really funny about this. Yeah. I think that ever all researchers and stuff, when they get into this, they're warned by their friends in the community, okay, get ready. But it does start. And before the documentary, before this life's journey, this kind of stuff just didn't happen. And now today it does. Do you just ignore it now, you know, and it just becomes part of your life? You you now know things will happen. You mean in forms of repercussions, attacks, and all of that? All, ever. It could be anything. Yeah. It could be your computer okay. acting funny. It could be somebody showing up in your bedroom in the middle of the. Yeah. It could be anything. 
Well, not at this point, nothing shocks me or, or surprises me anymore at all. <laughs> right. right. So, I mean, I also have, I've, you know, over the past 10 years, I've worked with individuals from all walks of life, with abductees, de- people dealing with entity possession and interference and all of that, very severe to more so more subtle things. So kind of seen a lot and, and, and experienced a lot. But, you know, the place where I'm at right now, definitely don't experience um, that much interference at all really like in the past because here's the thing what i realized in my path and this has been early on that seeking truth is a twofold process it's not only the seeking truth out there what's going on in the world hyperdimensionally whatever but also the you know seeking truth within our inner work because what i realized that these entities these beings however they can interfere and attack with us only can only uh attack that is corresponds or vibrates with a certain issue within us like a wound or blind spot right so that kind of throws out the blame game because i see a lot of the fallacy people blaming entities or all these kind of things you know for their hardship which it's fine it's, it's it can be very hard and distressing but when you look deeper into it you know also in my case you know, all the attacks I've received was like a deeper lesson within me. Like, for example, public attacks also taught me to stand up for myself, to get over my own insecurity, my lack of self-love, of just uh, self-acceptance, healthy self-confidence, and all of that healthy self-love, right? So, and working through my own guilt, shame, programming, conditioning, all of that, in order to raise the frequency. And that's really what it comes down to. Like, you know, I gave a talk uh, a few uh, months ago at a conference uh, called a Regeneration was the name of the conference. And my talk was the matrix control system and the path towards awakening, right? And I feel sometimes we all like in this community seeking truth and getting on to this high strangeness stuff. But sometimes we forget, quote unquote, what the whole point is of it, which is to raise to another level of being, to raise our frequency, right? And if we do this through sincere inner work, and, and, and inner work we um, embody this higher divine love more and more, this higher frequencies, and then these lower entities, astral beings or interferences don't, um, cannot target us anymore because it's not a frequency match, right? So that's what I've experienced in my life. There's been definitely all this assault and attacks and all these kind of things, but it was like a deeper initiation, right? To really take care of myself, to be very discerning who I associate myself with, and uh, to really, um, you know, be more externally considerate and, uh, you know, many other things. So that's, that's, that's been my path and that's really what, what my work is also about. It's not just about um, talking about these topics, but also our inner process, how we can truly transcend the matrix, right? Going back to the hero's journey, because it's a state of mind, state of being where you're in this world, but not of this world, where not that much affected anymore by all the garbage out there. How do you know when you found uh, your real self? Real self, well, it's not who we think we are. I, you know, I have experiences which are some hard to put into words, but I work a lot of meditation, qigong. I don't know if you heard of that, like of energy, yes. self, energy work. I do it every morning, 20 minutes qigong, followed by 20 minutes meditation out here in nature. And I get, you know, in a deep state and really deep in the present moment, right? And have beautiful experiences just feeling one with nature and interrelationship of it all and you know and having this feeling the quote-unquote divine whatever word you may use it's nothing external of ourselves but our higher spiritual nature right that thing that is real that is unchanged that is not damaged or wounded by any degree right but we need to work through it all the layers through all the layers of conditioning wounding doing shadow work to tap into that like as it is said in esoteric science, what Gurdjieff talked about, about the need to grow the soul, right? Right. And the whole aim of the matrix control system with everything we see out there, GMOs, chemtrails, uh, you know, EMFs and, 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 and toxic food and, and keeping us head-centric through technology is to keep us on this lower frequency to not raise the frequency because they don't want to lose their food source. Because on a deeper level, we are being used as a food source for these hyperdimensional entities, right? It's literally like the matrix, right, where human beings are being used as batteries. So we are being kept in this lower state, and the only way to transcend is not just physically getting away from all, you know, or fighting on a physical level, which can be a trap in itself, 
but to transcend it through this deeper inner work. And then you raise to a higher state of being. And by no means am I enlightened or totally awake. I still have my shitty days here and there, go in and out. But definitely, I, I've, I feel myself on a different level of awareness and being than 10 years ago when when I was just getting, you know, doing this UFO documentary and all of that, right? But for me, my life philosophy, all this are lessons. Because when I look back, everything, there was a deeper lesson within it, right? Which I needed to learn and integrate and not fall into victimization or blame, which is very disempowering state, and just take responsibility for my life. How far did you go with Gurdjieff? Gurdjieff, well, I've been reading his work and practicing his stuff for like, I don't know, over 15 years now his fourth way teaching and has helped me a lot. But also I don't, you know, I draw from so many teachings. I don't really use one teaching as a foundation, right? I get Gurdjieff, which is also based on, on esoteric Christianity, which is the true Christian teachings before the church corrupted it, which also gives a lot of hints and, and uh, insight into the hyperdimensional matrix, which they call the general law, right? Which resides over humanity. And there's an amazing trilogy by Boris Moraviev called Gnosis, based on esoteric Christianity. And um, uh, Sufism as well. I like, um, I like Zen, right? And uh, lately I've gotten into Sri Aurobindo and integral yoga and, you know, some shaman, obviously shamanic teachings. I've spent a lot of time in Peru working with shamans and all of that. So I kind of like, you know, take things here and there. And, and I need to also... Like Gurdjie said, you know, don't believe anything you haven't verified for yourself, right? So, I, you know, I need to work with something that resonates with me and also something I can verify with myself, within myself, right? And it's constantly learning. I'm always learning, you know, and there's always lessons. And but like we said before, what I also know, and that's how I work with others, what works for one may not work for another. There are so many different paths, modalities, teachings, Right. And really, we need to find out what works for ourselves and not uh, get caught into group pressure or group think, hive mind thinking, right? I'm all about the individual because I realize the soul path or the awakening path is a highly individual path based on our unique soul lessons, but also soul talents, right? And that is, you know, a lot of what's coming up now in this day and age is there's so much, right? Because the higher energies are increasing and the, it's almost we're being bombarded with this light energy but then the darkness comes out more and more we see it manifested in the outside world and the craziness and i see it also in a lot of people going through a lot of personal stuff right but this is the transformation we're going through we're like in a birth canal right and every birth is beautiful but also painful at the same time now uh you you talk about shadow work and for those in the audience that don't know or are not familiar with what you're referring to, what is it exactly? Well, shadow work, I referred to um, the concept of the shadow based on Carl Jung, Carl Jung in psychology. Carl Jung is a psychologist uh, who was actually a student of Freud, but then parted from him because they didn't agree. And he released a tremendous body of work. Um, and, and the, you know, more transpersonal psychology, right? Which also brings in the spiritual aspect, so to speak. But shadow is basically your blind spot in your nature, your un what's hidden in your unconscious, what you cannot see within yourself, right? And everybody has a shadow and we recognize the shadow if we get triggered like a trigger or we project onto others, as, as uh, Carl Jung said. And projecting onto others is when we really like get emotionally upset, triggered by this, something somebody said, so, some, or even just how, some, so how someone looks like, and we just project all our emotional anger and are really upset with somebody, that shows that this is actually our own stuff, our own shadow coming up, which we project onto the other person, right? So we are not aware of that. So through deeper inner work and the different techniques or through mirroring, getting feedback from others, because most often the shadow is uh, which we carry is more obvious to others around us uh, than to us because we all have our subjective blind spots, right? We all have, we are not, if you're not awakened and enlightened, you have your blind spots, you have your wounds and stuff you're not aware of, and you become so used to it and you build buffers, like Gurdjieff said, buffers and armor, you know, that kind of push it back more into the unconscious. And 
you see, for example, if, if you don't make the darkness conscious and really heal yourself on a psychological level, at some point it needs to come out and then most often actually manifests in disease. Yep. Like cancer, for example, is sure. actually uh, what I see is not just like based on toxins and all this kind of stuff, which can trigger it, surely, but it's also su uh, suppressed emotions, right? Yeah, it's or, emotional toxins. Exactly, that we have covered a way of not, you know, living our true self, right? And then it just the body reacts because the body again is the mind right that we need to also get into our body and listen to the sickness of our bodies now when somebody normally comes to you uh they're already uh on the path right they're they're aware but how would you give advice to somebody that hasn't been exposed to Gurdjieff or Young or or Joseph Campbell and and are on this life's journey or that they, they are seeking it, right? But they haven't gone there yet. They haven't come to you, but they're listening right. to this show. How do you talk to them right now? Well, if you're really sincere and answer the call, you know, even if it says in the Bible, uh, ask and ask and knock and knock and shall be given, there will be forces. You'll be led to the right book, the right teaching, whatever that is really perfect for you specific. Well, right? everybody but Gurdjieff. You need to, <laughs> like, and you need to, to say, yeah, you need to wean yourself into Gurdjieff. Don't, yeah, so don't go Gurdjieff say, first. Yeah. For example, a lot of people ask me, like, what, you know, ask me for book suggestions, recommendations, and like, I cannot really do that. You know, you can, you know, on my writings, a lot of quotes from different sources, go by what would you resonate with, what you feel drawn to. Because early in my life, I would have, Gurdjieff was like in a later stage, right? That is not for quote unquote beginners. No, I feel, no, right? no, no, <laughs> so no, would have no. Completely thrown me off. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> so I got, I, I started with like Alan Watts basics, kind of like just spiritual insights and whatnot. And right, then, you know, right. Krishnamurti, and but again in my life, the right book or teaching came uh, uh, around that was perfect for where I was at in that moment. So my advice is, if you're really sincere, then open yourself up and you know go to a bookstore or browse around and whatever you gets your attention, what you feel intuitively drawn to, like you got the response. Hmm, that that's something I would like to get into. Follow that. Right. Right. That's that's the basic advice I can I can give because. Everybody's path is really unique, and you need to find your own way. You know what? I just thought of something, Bernhard. Yeah. You and I need to write the fourth way for dummies. <laughs> we think about that for a second, right? Right. No, you, wow. you, you laugh. Yeah. That's a pretty. I. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, fourth way for dummies. Right. Well, it's. That's a daunting project. <laughs> <laughs> man, man. Yeah. And uh, so back the, the the shadow work, though, that that is very, very interesting because uh, those out there that may be uh, irritating. Right. And they know uh, that maybe they have a hard time making friends. Right. <laughs> or maybe. Uh, maybe they are constantly rubbing people the wrong way. And that is probably exactly it. That shadow of themselves is leaning on those around them, and they don't even know it. Exactly. Even Carl Young said, I mean, I'm paraphrasing uh, his quote, but the people, the ones who irritate you the most are your biggest teachers. That's right. Yeah, that's Hence, fascinating. For example, right now what we're seeing with Trump and everybody, anybody who gets triggered by that guy and upset, Boom. In the end, I wrote an article about it. Trump is actually the teacher, a teacher in the sense, <laughs> right? Not that he teaches, but the way people react to this, per to this guy and all this, whatever tweets he does and so on. And you see especially a lot of liberals getting whole, all of, you know, project a lot of hate and anger and disgust on this guy. It's their shadow coming up. Yeah. Instantaneous too. Yeah. I mean, they, it doesn't take much to set them. Uh, look, I have been uh, around some pretty intense conversations by just saying the word Trump. Yeah, I can imagine. It's a trigger word. It's Ooh, trigger word. <laughs> man. You know, and, and, and what's, what's interesting about that is you got both sides, too, right? right. You have the anti and pro Trump. 
uh, triggers coming out exactly. in full force and budding heads. Yeah. The sparks fly. It's immediate. You're absolutely right about that. It's it's a fascinating part of our society right now, and we're watching it play out in real time. Yeah, yeah, then, exactly. Now, <laughs> I wanted to yeah. uh, I wanted to go back really quick, um, and I, I can see now that we're going to do a little bit of overtime, so that's fine. I wanted to go back uh, a little bit uh, onto the. Uh, the DMT parallel world alien aspect of things. Mm -hmm. When when your friend uh, had that experience, did you also um, have an ET experience with that? And during that uh, experience? No, not maybe not at that time, but at any time with DMT. With DMT, absolutely. I saw, like I mentioned before, definitely entities, right? And not like classical, like gray or whatever, or even I saw reptilian entities, but it was not this fearful, you know, whatever is depicted in many drawings. It was very just mechanically shape-shifting, weird. It's really hard to put into words, really hard to describe in words that experience and what, what you see, you know, to bring it back into language. But I just saw a whole world of, of intelligence and in many ways, how they kind of like don't take us serious and even look down on us. It's just like we're like in a lower life form <laughs> in a sense, mm -hmm. right? But having said that, I've had a beautiful, amazing experiences of like benevolent forces, you know, where I felt just really healed, in like almost my DNA restructured and all of that, you know. But I want to point out on that note, you know, that any of that medicine plants or DMT, it's not a magic pill. And there are dangers in, in all of that, especially with ayahuasca as well, which I've experienced and written about. So it's not that black and white. It can be amazing and done in the right setting from a shamanic perspective and ceremony. But, you know, it can also be abused and you can end up with um, bring something back, an entity attachment, right, which um, I've dealt with many, many years ago. I didn't even know what I was back then. And I've worked with people literally who have taken an intent entity or literally dealing with entity possession after having gone to an ayahuasca retreat in Peru. Right. The, the, the world that you are entering on ayahuasca, is it the same world? Uh, they, they should be because of the chemical compositions of DMT yeah. and ayahuasca. Is it the same uh, on ayahuasca, uh, just extended for a longer period of time, or is it another dimension altogether? I feel uh, for me, just DMT by itself is more intense than ayahuasca. And have worked with ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a blend of different plants. So there's a one plant that contains the DMT, but it's also uh, the classical thing of ayahuasca. It's also called la purga. So the whole purging aspect and really, you know, the throwing up and energetically and just cleansing and all of that. And it comes in waves. And right. it also depends on the setting with the shaman and all of that. So, you know, sometimes I, I have the saying, you know, DMT is like the trailer. You get all the... <laughs> you get all the Flashes, best parts, right? Right, right exactly. Right. And then ayahuasca is more the feature film. It, you know, I think uh, the average epic. ayahuasca ceremony is maybe six hours or something like that, right? And uh, so, and and DMT that uh, I've I've often heard. I haven't done it. Okay, so let's be very clear. I've studied it. I've been around. I've talked to so many. Uh, experiencers with it and shamans. I've, I've, you know, I've done my research here. But the one thing that I find really, really interesting is when somebody tells me that the DMT uh, trip or experience is ten minutes. That fifteen minutes later, I mean, you're you're straight, but you remember everything. I mean, how yeah. is that possible? I mean, can you literally? An hour after taking a hit of DMT, can you drive a car? Uh, yeah, I've done it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, you know, it is it is hard to put into words because once here's the thing with DMT and and Richard Dr. Rick Strassman talks about it. It it is already your pineal gland produces DMT dimethyltryptamine. You know, right. actually, that's when you dream. You at night, your pineal gland is excret excreting DMT, and on um, Strassman's research, he has a hypothesis, you know, that the 
the pineal gland produces and releases DMT, and that the pineal gland also releases DMT at the moment of birth and at the moment of death. So he, his hypothesis is that the pineal gland and DMT relates to the enter and the exit of the soul, which is really fascinating. Right. So hence, when I had my DMT experience, it felt so familiar, like, oh, I'm back home kind of thing. Right. So there's that. But because it's you're tripping on your body own chemical, your body recognizes it right away and synthesizes it that, that quick. Right. So when you take a hit of DMT, it goes so fast and you really have to like work on the technique to get the right hit because the moment you inhale it, you're, you're already going, you're gone. The, the, the physical room dissolves. So it goes really, really quick. And then these 10 minutes are like an eternity, right? You're completely somewhere else. And then you come back, you feel coming back into your body, boom, boom, boom. And you feel that meat bag, as I say. And then you still feel it and you feel the lightness, you feel more your energy body. And I usually I like doing some Qigong or Tai Chi or, or meditation right after. So it still lingers with you for a while, but then definitely after an hour or so, you're, you're sober, completely sober. Is it possible to uh, trigger it without DMT? I mean, without smoking without it? Absolutely. I mean, that's traditional shamans would have done through trance drumming, for example. <laughs> right. The whole point is to get yourself drumming in trance and then on a, a chemical level, your pineal gland then releases DMT, you know, or what also some yogis do with uh, just, you know, completely darkness and breath work, intense breath work can trigger that as well and sleep deprivation and all of that. So there are other techniques you can do to uh, experience that, quote unquote, naturally. Yeah, and what about uh, an adrenaline rush and that hallucination that could come along with that? Like maybe it, it could be anything triggering it, a car crash or dropping off of a roller coaster, you know, jumping out of an airplane, you know, that think, adrenaline right? rush. Yeah, anything which kind of like, yeah, I absolutely. You know, I don't, I don't have, I'm not into extreme sports, but <laughs> maybe that's why people do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it ma it makes a lot of sense. And yeah. the, uh, uh, the adrenaline rush, like when you die and you hear uh, the, you know, your life flashes before yeah. your eyes, I've often yeah. thought that is probably the pineal gland and DMT just kicking off with an immense rush of of adrenaline that is forcing this to happen. You're not seeing your life before your eyes. Well, you, you are, but right. it is a, a, it is a massive DMT push. Yeah. That, that's exactly also relates to Rick Strassman's theory. What you just mentioned. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would just make an awful lot of sense. So therefore yeah. go jump off a building. If you don't want to smoke <laughs> uh, DMT, let's take a break right here. Can I keep you for an extra 10 minutes? Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. Bernhard Gunther is our guest tonight. I told you, piercing the veil of reality. We're doing all of that tonight. More with Bernard right after this short break. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Jump in on the conversation. It's happening right now. We'll be right back. So you went to dinner last night, you had your favorite pasta, Ugh. or maybe you had a heavy spicy meal and it left you, Ugh. get the tea.com. Maybe you mowed down a huge steak and your plumbing is all plugged, Ugh. get the tea.com. Our super strength tea will take care of your occasional, Ugh. it's all organic and non-GMO. Get rid of, Ugh. we have so many great supplements, but our super tea is number one. Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tepe. Erica, Brittany, Gabby, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com Welcome back to Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Bernhard Gunther. Piercing the Veil of Reality is his collection of essays, films, webinars, and interviews. You can go to veilofreality.com. The links are over on our website, jimmychurchradio.com. Go check it out. Lots of great information there. Bernhard, I wanted to kind of jump into this. Today, it seems that we are getting... Uh, a- ET alien contact information on a daily basis, whether it's from NASA, exoplanets, fast radio burst, uh, sightings, video, the government talking about it. We've got the Space Corps that is, uh, uh, you know, being uh, formed, which is probably already in in existence. But we're getting this thing every single day now. What is is it? Is it a slow movement towards disclosure? And do you feel like there is something that is about to break open? Well, yeah, I've observed that a lot, but, you know, I've kind of like taken a distance from this whole scene, so to speak, because I see on, honestly, like from where I come from, what I've experienced and what I've researched, there's a lot of nonsense out there, with a lot of false claims and so-called whistleblowers uh, popping up here and there. And but a lot of it is I feel there's a there's a deception in all of that, right? And not to sound negative, because a person's close. Okay, you're breaking up. Uh, we've lo- we've I mean lost you. Is- I need you to repeat all of that. You were breaking up. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I've got you. Got you. 
Ah, it's so what I'm saying that a lot of that, you know, I've pegged it. Just you want to call me back? Yeah, we're we're, we're dropping no. out. Just just stay right there. I, uh, I'm just going to reset right here in real time. And you know what's funny when we do this. Uh, when everybody listens to this on the archives, it won't be there. Okay, Bernard, go ahead. Let's hey. let's start over again. Okay, interesting to have some interference here right now on this that's, topic. <laughs> at that moment, see, that's what I'm saying. I don't even care anymore, man. I'm just so relaxed with it all. <laughs> yeah, we get used to it, right? <laughs> totally, totally. Okay, so back to disclosure. What do you think is going on? Um, I feel in that before like i've taken a distance i'm more like an observer to see what's going on there and i see a lot of craziness a lot of from my point of view based on my research and experience a lot of disinformation that is promoted as truth with a lot of like you know very prolific people making all kinds of claims which i question so called contactees and whistleblowers and all of that and for me you know when we talk about disclosure Who's going to disclose what? That's even I asked the question in in that in that uh, film, right? Because government is never going. Even Richard Dolan talked about this. Well, the government, official government, doesn't even really know what's going on, right? There's secret government and all kinds of projects, which even the president has no clue about, and all of that. So we won't see any disclosure from the government anytime soon. If we see a disclosure, if there's maybe a conditioning of the masses for a disclosure, you can bet yourself it's going to be full of lies and distortions. Because there's no way the full truth will be disclosed. They will be giving away the whole matrix setup of the whole. Because the, if you disclose the truth of the uh, UFO phenomena and all these topics, you cannot not disclose the hyperdimensional aspect and abductions and all the more darker aspects a lot of people deny or don't want to look into that is part of it, right? and how we are being controlled on these unseen levels. So I feel a lot of it is counterintelligence and a distraction and like keeping people always. I mean, I've, I've lost count how often I've heard predictions from, again, prolific people out there that there will be disclosure. Then Obama go, was going to disclose it. There will be disclosure in 2009, 10, whatever. It never happened, right? So it's like almost like the carrot, you know, in front of the mule always dangling, like disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. But I, I don't see it happening, right? I see it's more like it's, a, it's part of the distraction, so to speak, to pe keep people preoccupied. And especially nowadays, what I see with all the information on the Internet, which is great that we have the Internet, obviously, to share and information and research. But there's even more junk out there. And that's how the, um, you know, uh, counterintelligence and, and, and control opposition works as well to put in false information to, to keep us on the wrong track, so to speak, right? So we need to be very, very discerning. What I also see is a lot of sensationalism, sensationalism, what people get addicted or attached to, right? It's not even, it's not, all, it's not about seeking truth anymore, really objective and being a bit more scientific about it and all of that, but people want to hear the newest experiences or the gr newest revelation kind of almost like a tabloid style, right? And unfortunately, what I see happening in the alternative media a lot, it's becoming a bit more like the mainstream media. It's all about clickbait, quotes, getting more target audience, this, the new, this information and all of that. So, you know, the truth will reveal itself or come out in doses here and there, but I don't see a full disclosure of the truth happening anytime soon. Well, there's there's a few different there's a few different things in play here. We have the world in general will always go see a great UFO flick, right? Hollywood, sure. Star Wars, Transformers. Sure. In the you know you want a successful movie, make it about aliens, and and there you go. So there's no question that the public starves for that they enjoy that you have that then on the right. flip side because the government knows this they will target certain uh groups and individuals and feed them information right they come in they go okay man you know i'm from the government here's a p I, I, I we like what you're saying we like what you're doing here's a document here's a piece of information and mm -hmm. and we're your friend and and we like you well people want to hear that so they hear that 
and they feel important, and then they get mm-hmm. fed disinformation, and they exactly. put out that disinformation, and it has happened. It's it's probably happening right now with probably 10, 10 or 20 different individuals in in ufology, and they don't even know it. And, Very true. Yes, and, and there's no question that this is going on. Why? Because the the UFO community and the world in general wants and starves for this information. So they accept it. And mm-hmm. it, it's part of the world that we live in today. And it, it, it happens all the time. And it's not only with ufology. It's with anything when it comes to uh, the media and mass media that they they know that uh, people will read and people will click and people will believe. And right. it, it, and I don't know how we got stuck in this circle of, of uh, you know, this catch-22, but we certainly are here with that today. Yeah. Very well said, Jimmy. That's so true. And what I see, a lot of disinformation, it's not necessarily that a lot of other in people in ufology spread disinformation on purpose and that they are conscious agents, but I call them like unconscious agents. Like you said, it's just like, Maybe they got some information, the ego got hooked, or they believe it and in you know, they trust it and just put it out there believing it and spread disinformation, right? Believing it to be true, but not purposely trying to deceive, right? So that's that's unfortunately definitely the issue, right? Well, and then then th- there's the other part of this where, you know, I don't need disclosure because I've seen things in the sky just like you. Right. Right. I know that there is something going on right now uh, as we do this broadcast. There's something in the skies right now. If I could leave the bunker, if you you could go outside (laughs) right now in Tabanga and look up uh, with some night vision, you're going to see something crazy. So I I know that this is going on. But but the other part of it uh, that we need to be aware of, and you mentioned this earlier, and I think it's a really great point, whether it's a channeler or it's a contactee, or it's an experiencer, or a researcher, or a whistleblower. You need to just listen to everybody. You have to. What you what you take from it is up to you, but you have to listen to all of the dialogue. You have to listen to everything. If you start to dismiss one or the other, uh, you're damaging yourself. You really need to listen to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, listen, but also like, apply some basic critical thinking and not just go, you know, there's one fallacy which I've written about lately as well. People claim a lot of, especially in this day and age, oh, this must be true because I resonate with it, right? Right. And there's truth to the idea of resonating. I experienced it myself, but it can also be misapplied if we mistake resonating for wishful thinking and emotional projection, want to believe something so badly that it's actually not true resonating, but it's an emotional projection, Right. And then that's how actually New Age Contel Pro and disinformation works to tag that emotional, you know, feel good information. Just because something makes you feel good and sounds great and amazing doesn't necessarily it's true. Just like when you get information and it makes you fearful, right, doesn't mean it's not true either just because you experience fear. So that's why in all of that, it goes back to the point I was making in the beginning of this talk, just my work, what work is all about. It's seeking truth out there, but also the inner work. We need to clean our inner work, our own conditioning, our bias, our shadow work, our um, you know false beliefs we have to clear that so we can find and connect to this true voice within and connect to this true resonance and not mistake it for wishful thinking or emotional projection, right? And then we, we can apply it and then also use logic and critical thinking, obviously, even though the logic mind has its limitations obviously when we deal with the five senses but i see people believing too easily too fast right and and you know I misapply the word resonating for example a lot of fundamentalist christians truly resonate with the bible in little terms and think the earth is only five thousand years old right <laughs> so well that's... and 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 this is what's really funny with what you just said I actually have the opposite point of view. Mm -hmm. I think you should find the person that you resonate with and, and, and feel comfortable in that zone, whether it's Richard Dolan, right? You resonate with his message, right? Well, that's okay. 
if you resonate with the Betty and Barney Hill story or Travis Walton or Rendlesham or or aliens have stopped nuclear war, whatever, whatever it may be, if you resonate with that, that's OK. You know, what you don't want to do is close off somebody because somebody else didn't resonate with that person. Right. And they tell you something negative, And now you are cut off from something that you may find actually totally wonderful or interesting. And that that's my take. I think that resonating with somebody is great. It may be a musician. What if you resonate, you know, uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen, right? Great guitar player. But somebody tells you, ah, Eddie Van Halen sucks. Well, it, it, next thing you know, you don't go and listen to that musician because you listen to somebody else. Right. And, and well, I think that's, that's dangerous. That's- Right. Well, that's music. You cannot argue about taste. It's so subjective, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, totally, totally. But, but you know, I just want to say I, I see where you're coming from, but my point was just the idea of resonating itself. Like, totally, you need everybody in their own path, need to figure things out, whatever you're drawn to. Absolutely. But speaking for myself, I know that I, in the past, not very being very discerning, not really having done a lot of inner work, I have resonated with lies, with flat out disinformation and lies, just right. because I wanted to do be true because it sounded fascinating and I right. felt emotionally excited and I mistook it for resonating. So I'm just about the term resonating in itself. Right. right. So- and, and and you're exactly right there. And, and I and I totally get that. But if you didn't have that experience, then you wouldn't have you wouldn't know how to practice discernment. That's true. That's the good, yeah. That that goes back to all these are lessons, right? Uh, so uh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. That's it. In this field, it's all trial and error. Like it's not like on my path, I just weed through it. Like okay, this is <laughs> I'm omniscient and know everything. This is truth and lies. No, I've been. It's a labyrinth. I like, got to dead ends. Okay, this is not going anywhere. <laughs> like this doesn't make sense. Oh, this is a path here. Yeah, let's follow this, right? And then, but the more as you progress on the path, and especially. Uh, incorporate the inner work, the sincere inner work, your compass comes much better aligned with truth and also with your inner soul calling, right? Right. And and your personal path. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've done so many interviews and so many conversations where I've had uh, from day to day or month to month, and you start to string along the years where uh, things directly conflict and contradict the previous day's interview or experience. I can imagine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it, it, for the audience, it can get a little bit confusing too as well. It's like, who do I believe here? Who do I trust? Well, you know what? Before we start to, as ourselves, start to cut people off or, or start passing judgment, then we're censoring ourselves. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing in our community. We should be doing the exact opposite, you know, right, not you also, censored. As a radio show host, you pr- provide the platform for diversity, right? It's it's not just about your personal opinion. With, and and is, isn't that the point? Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, like, personally, I don't attach myself to anything. I don't belong to any groups or communities, you know. I'm, I'm, I enjoy being around people and build community, but not. I'm not a follower like this one internet or whistleblower personality where people just believe everything what he or she says i don't operate like this there are many things that's i don't really there may, whatever i get into their parts i don't necessarily agree with and it's not because i'm wrong i'm right or wrong or whatever it's just i if i cannot verify it for myself or it doesn't align connect the dots with other research like okay maybe i change my mind later it's more being flexible like this even with myself i don't agree with myself sometimes looking back okay there are certain things i thought were true and and put them out but now new information has come in new experiences so now i gotta let this go so i have no problem admitting that i was wrong in the past yeah so i feel this humility is needed in in in, in that path or that scene as well a bit right that humbleness being able to admit that one that uh, one was wrong as well every day you find out how how little you know right exactly. and how wrong you are i love it and that's part of the journey I want to thank you so much. What a great conversation tonight, Bernhard. And and don't change. How can everybody get a hold of you? Um, uh, through my website, veilofreality.com. 
there's a contact form as well and also my personal website which is also linked from veil of reality which is my name.com bernhardgunther.com that website is dedicated for my work i do integrative body work energy work uh, and all of that and also offer holistic coaching skype sessions or in person for people who want to process a bit deeper and yeah those uh, two websites bernhardgunther.com or veilofreality.com Thank you so much. Now go enjoy the rest of your night up in Topanga Canyon. Awesome, Jimmy. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Great conversation. Thank you, Bernard. Take care. Bye. Veilofreality.com or BernhardGunther.com. Links are over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Great conversation. I could have done that all night long. We've got to get Bernhard back here very soon. And as I wrap up here uh, tonight, there's a couple of uh, things that I've got to get in here that are pretty interesting in that category of all of the news that you know absolutely nothing about. And the first thing, check this out. Gasoline and diesel prices have reportedly jumped in North Korea after its largest crude supplier, China, has halted all fuel sales. That's right. The move came as part of the international pressure on Pyongyang to curb its nuclear and missile programs. Chinese state-owned oil major CMPC has suspended diesel and gasoline sales to North Korea. The price of gasoline jumped to $2.92 per liter as of July 5th. Today is July 19th. And as you know, uh, news out of North Korea is a bit tough to get. But it is up from a dollar. It's up a dollar forty six per liter since June 21st. It has doubled in two weeks. That is absolutely nuts. And nobody thought that. China was going to step in and do nothing. Now, as the news of this broke, as it turns out, China stopped selling fuel to North Korea two months ago. Was not reported in the mass media, in the media in general, not at all. But that is now what has happened. And this announcement about the suspension of fuel came from China. Very interesting. Now, huge, huge cryptocurrency news has been going down over the last couple of days. And could the end of Bitcoin and Ethereum be here? Now, check this out. Investors have suffered heavy losses following a dramatic drop in the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum in recent days. Bitcoin fell to around $1,800 and Ethereum uh, to around $133 over this past weekend, dropping 38% and 67% off of their all-time highs from last week. Bitcoin, in particular, suffered heavy losses since hitting its high of $3,018 on June 12th. 38% drop. The decline appears to be part of a wider trend across the market, with trade publication Coindesk reporting this past Sunday that the worth of all publicly traded digital currencies had fallen $10 billion in 24 hours over this last weekend. Now think about that. Absolutely amazing. I remember... Uh, I'm going to say this is about three years ago when I did a whole expose on Bitcoin and I talked about Bitcoin for about a week um, and the dark web. And I got a bunch of email and feedback, you know, you know, why, why are you talking about this and Bitcoin and, and it's, it's not, it, it is a big deal. And we're talking about a lot of money floating in this and the way that the dark web operates, which, and you need to hear me. That's 95% of the web. This surface web that we're on right now is a little sliver of the real web. And this is what runs that dark underworld. Now think about that. And the motivation with, um, with, with hacking and malware, it's all driven by Bitcoin. 
and the government influence in on this. Now, without the regulation, right, without the feds involved in Bitcoin, it is as volatile. It is not protected. It's going to continue. This news about Bitcoin and that money uh, that has disappeared out of this market, $10 billion in 24 hours, you need to think about that. Now, breaking news out of Italy. New research claims that the Shroud of Turin is stained with the blood of a torture victim, supporting the theory that it was used to bury Jesus. Now, the Shroud of Turin in in a linen cloth, which is three meters in length, that bears the image of a man some believe to be Jesus Christ, the cloth is thought by many to have been used to wrap Christ's body after his crucifixion. The new research carried out by various institutions under Italy's National Research Council and published in the U.S. scientific journal PLOS One contradicts the theory that Jesus' face was painted onto the cloth by forgers in medieval times. Elvio Carlino, who led the research at the Institute of uh, Crystallography in Bari, Italy, says that the cloth contains nanoparticles of creatine, creatine and bounded with small nanoparticles of iron oxide, which indicate blood and severe trauma rather than paint. Very interesting. Now, Scientists at the Instituto of Astrophysica de Canarias, a research institute in the Canary Islands, just discovered one of the brightest galaxies we've ever come across. It's around a thousand times brighter than our galaxy, has a very high rate of star formation, and is 10,000 million light years away. The researchers found the galaxy using gravitational lensing effect, where in really massive objects in space like galaxies or galaxy clusters warp and enhance the light of smaller objects nearby. This phenomenon has helped researchers track down exoplanets, black holes, and unexpected galaxy types. This discovery, which was recently published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, was made possible by a galaxy cluster that lies in between us and the newly observed bright galaxy. The daughter of a couple who disappeared in the Swiss Alps more than 70 years ago has said the discovery of two bodies emerging from a melting glacier has brought her a deep sense of calm after being away so long without an answer. Her name? Marceline Udry Dumoulin, she's now 79 years old, told the Le Matin newspaper of Lausanne, Switzerland, that she and her siblings spent our whole lives looking for them without stopping. We thought that we could give them the funeral they deserved one day. Well, she's the youngest of seven children born to Marceline and Francine Dumoulin. The couple went to milk their cows on a meadow above their home in Switzerland's uh, canton on August 15th, 1942, and never came home. The regional police force told the local media the bodies were discovered last week near a ski lift on a glacier by a worker for an adventure resort company. Absolutely great story. So there you go. There's all of the news that you know absolutely nothing about. Tomorrow night is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by Open Lines. Last week, we had one of the most phenomenal uh, Fader Nights ever in the history of the show. And tomorrow night, as always, I'm so excited to just sit down with all of you on a Thursday night. So get ready for that. And uh, I may have something else, somebody else, to uh, uh, open the show with tomorrow night. More on that tomorrow. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hill J. Paul, Marty Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitova, Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale, Webmaster, Drew the Geek, Music, Doug Aldrich, Intro, Space Boy, SpaceboyMusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2017 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. 
Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Until tomorrow night, everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.